This week on the Poison Rana Patreon, we were joined by Nate Milton to talk all about the greatest matches of Sting in a brand new episode of Best Match Ever. One of the best stories WCW ever told. Uh, one of the best stories in wrestling history, except for that finish. Uh, and then we get, you know, TNA Sting, which also gives us Joker Sting, which was weird and ridiculous. But also, like, I, I give Sting credit for trying stuff. Even at a, at a point in his career where he could have easily said, nah, I'm not doing this. Then AW, like AW Sting, you notice I skipped over that whole WWE. Time. I was about to say, you uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll talk about it, but then I have thoughts on the WWE run. Oh, yeah. AW Sting to me is what the WWE run should have been if they were respectful. Get the first 40 minutes of this show for free on the Poison Rana podcast feed or get the whole version plus retro NXT reviews, movie reviews and so much more over at patreon.com slash poison rana and it's only five bucks a month so what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Huh? What are you waiting for? First time in a long time, the back like I never left. Taking these days as it comes, you know me, I don't read ahead. Watch me burn down everything, BBE on the TV set. When I'm in control on the road, you can never really know what's up next. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Braden Harrington here with Davey Portman for Up Next. You found us on postwrestling.com or whatever podcast app you are using. And of course, youtube.com slash postwrestling. Hello, YouTube room. Hello, postmarks. Hello, postmarks. Hello, NXT friends. Friends. Friends, indeed. It's Tuesday night, which means we watched NXT and we are here to talk all about it. So, hello, anyone in the post wrestling YouTube chat. We see you. Super chats are welcome. Do you want to buy us a beer in Philly? You can start with a super chat right now on Tuesdays here on the post feed. Uh, so, send them in and we'll read them here on the show. Uh, welcome. We're going to talk about some NXT because we're on the road to WrestleMania, but we're also going to stand and deliver in Philly. We are indeed. Yeah, we're on the. We're on the road. There's a roadblock next week. Yes. But uh, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. I think there's a road things block. are cooking. Yeah, there's there's a roadblock in an asylum next week. We got to stop off at Arkham. Yeah. And then we're driving through to Philly. So yeah, that's what's happening next week. We'll talk about what, what that means uh, later on. But yeah, uh, things, are, things are really going for wrestling right now. A lot going on. There's WWE just firing on all cylinders with The Rock, The Bloodline, WrestleMania, Cody Rhodes everything going on raw smackdown even nxt seems to be pretty hot right mm -hmm. now so everyone who is a fan is just like super dialed in and at the same time i feel like it's catching the eyes of like your casuals again and you're like part-time part-time fans you know they're really coming back yeah I'm, I'm still getting the uh the odd thing from regulars at the bar who don't yeah. watch but then they're like hey logan paul's a wrestler now uh, i'm like yep yep had that conversation on monday um you know keep on asking about the rock what's going on there who's yeah. this cody guy like all those questions yeah it's definitely bleeding through to the wider world now yeah pretty crazy so it's gonna be a it's gonna be a big one um we we have a lot of wrestling going on in our lives so definitely search poison rana in your podcast app and give us a follow a subscribe and all that jazz because we do a whole lot of other shows and uh we talk about everything else in the world of wrestling including AEW and wwe and everything that's going on so 
we uh, did a show just this past weekend where we were chatting about Elimination Chamber, we, where we gave our thoughts on the whole mm-hmm. show. So go check that out, plus our preview and prediction for AEW Revolution, which is this Sunday. And... Yeah, does anyone want to drive us? Uh, you you <laughs> you started looking at flights, you maniac, when we already have plans for WrestleMania. Mm. And on top of that, AEW is coming to Toronto in a few weeks. And we're like, oh, we'll probably go to Dynamite, Demand Lucha, maybe Collision in London, Ontario, the real London. And on top of that, you're like, hey, how 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 do we get to North Carolina? And it's like, okay, who, who, we started texting. We're city boys, right? So uh, c- city boys stay up. But uh, you, we were texting all our friends with cars. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, uh, you you want to go to Greensboro? Greensboro? It's a great time of the year for Greensboro, which is about a 12 hour drive from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Mm. So, uh, none of our friends replied yes. But then, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, uh, uh, a stray Mike Murray, friend of the show, what's his? He was the last one to be like, he was teasing us. Oh, he was lying. Yeah. He's a liar. Okay. So, anyone, uh, who's going to Greensboro from Toronto, let's just hitch a ride. Or even if you're in Buffalo or something, we can make it there. Drive oh, yeah, us from true. there. Yeah. What are flights from Buffalo to Greensboro? Still a lot? I think so. Okay. Right. I could look. Yeah. Torontonians, <laughs> I, I've driven, I've been to Charlotte because I drive with like the family for 12 hours, stay in North Carolina for a night, and then you continue the drive to Florida. That's like a Canadian thing to do. Right. I don't think I've ever been to Greensboro. So, yeah. I Yeah, I got to say, we did the, um, the, best match ever sting which you can hear the first 40 minutes today for free on the poison runner podcast feed or if you're a patron you can get the whole version but great show we recorded with nate going through his entire career and then man that promo last week and i'm just like fuck he's retiring like, yeah we gotta go we gotta be there so uh we'll hitchhike they are cheaper from buffalo let's go I don't know how we'd get to Buffalo at like four in the morning. Right. Super chats are uh, <laughs> really welcome right now. If you want to help us not only go to WrestleMania, because I mean, we don't have our mania tickets yet. No, which is, no. I which mean, they, they, they could go up once the rock announces he's wrestling. Yeah. I, I don't think I'm getting a ticket until, until like the day I'm of. There. Yeah. Yeah. Probably the same, but we do have some tickets for some other stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got tickets for some house of glory versus revolver. Uh, we, I got tickets to DDT with Dickie and a few others going to that. Um, and then Sino randomly bought a bunch of people, some tickets. We might be going to this Sino, the wise man of, of poison Rana, uh, just bought tickets to that ECW tribute show. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't know about you, but I've been to Philly before and I've had a great time, but I, I've never been to the ECW arena yeah. and I feel like going to the ECW, uh, what is it? Tribute to the extreme by uh, battleground championship wrestling. I think it could be a very fun train wreck of a time. I think it's the arenas that draw more than the uh, show me, in to, 2024. To but Jerry like, and Super Crazy, one last time. Let's fucking go. Yeah, I'm sure t- we've gonna we're gonna have to walk like to Jerry. Yeah, uh, but I'm <laughs> we still. I'm do, sure yeah. he's still got it. Yeah, no, I I think it's gonna be really fun. But yeah, I think the the draw for me is definitely going to that arena while yeah. we're in Philly. Yeah, sure. uh, that card has a bunch of ECW guys on it. So uh, definitely. Look, and they're scattered throughout the week there. So let us know if you're going to Philly that weekend, what shows are you looking forward to? What should we look out for? Uh, I know some friends were asking about uh, the the new Fanatics, WWE World. If if you're if you're a Scooby-Doo fan like me yeah. and you watched the Scooby-Doo WrestleMania mystery, you'll know that they go to WrestleMania world. They go to WWE world and now it's a real thing. Now you can actually go to WWE world. Is this just what they've renamed access? It sounds like. Yeah. It. Yeah. This is kind of like the thing in the, Saudi. Like the giant store. You've got all the like memorabilia and stuff. Like I, I've had a good time access before. It's pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, seeing all that stuff. Yeah. Um, so that could be pretty cool. But, yeah. And mind. then ring of honors announced the show as well. I tweeted out, hey, because uh, RVD is not announced for that ECW okay. trivia show. He's one name that's kind of definitely missing right. off that that you'd imagine. And I suspect TK wants to book him for that ROH show on Friday, which is around 7 p.m. on the Friday night. So hmm. in Philly. And I tweeted like, hey, Jerry Lynn works for AEW. TK, book it one more time. But I, I think Jerry Lynn is still injured. Uh, and, yeah, you know, I can't retired. see Jerry Lynn rest. Yeah, I know. Oh. But, you know, fingers crossed. But that would make me consider going to I that. mean, there's crazy schedules in uh, in WrestleMania weekend. Yeah, where they're leaving and yeah, going. Yeah, so and- it, 
I've looked at the Uber because we're going to be finishing. Oh, no, sorry. Ring of Honor is further out, isn't it? It's like 20 minute drive. Yeah. He can open one show and close another. All right. So you're saying sure. it's easy. Well, there's Dudley Boys reuniting because Devon's kind of back. He's been kind yeah. of taking the back seat. He's not wrestled really. So Dudley Boys coming back to face o- Onita. Yeah. And a mystery partner, which I imagine is Sabu or Sandman. I would think that's the Sandman yeah. spot yeah. for sure. Yeah. So. Uh, were we? Did you go with me to the Dudleys versus the Bucks at the one show? Because that was a fucking think, riot. Uh, no, don't think so. It was pretty nuts. Uh, but yeah, like low key, this this show sounds pretty good. But I'm every day I kind of look at the, the post wrestling website or all the other all yeah. the feds that are doing the shows to see like if they up- update stuff because then it'll like change my mind on what I want to do. It's like a festival, but yeah, yeah. The thing is, from like. It's got so expensive though. Yeah, yeah. You can pick up a ticket for NXT for 20 bucks. Ring of Honor is like 20 bucks. And then some of these shows are like 60, 60, 70, 80 bucks. And that's like the cheapest price as well, which is like a lot when you're earning Canadian bucks. (laughs) You know, like that's very true. Um, yeah, definitely gone up since like my first WrestleMania trip. But yeah, it's it's fun. It's fun. There's gonna be so much going on. Um but yeah, uh, so and let us know if you'll be there. We'll definitely do some uh, meetups and we'll do a lot of road diaries as well. So definitely uh, give us a follow on all the socials. And if you are going, or even if you're not going, you should head over to chopped-tees.com slash Poison Rana and pick up our brand new Poison Rana. Ba-da-ba. Yeah, our Rocky-inspired Ba-da-ba. shirt. Uh, sorry, Philly-inspired. I don't know if we can say rocky or not but yeah it's it's a rock it's rocky it's we're on the steps like rocky posing like rocky um we did it yeah but look at this it's very nice and you can get this in the baseball version you can get it in the ringer it looks you can nice get a all classic white t-shirt but yes very nice pick up that at chop teascom and yeah do it <laughs> yeah uh this is this is great you got so good at some of these like social uh sorry like the the making the different logos and the t-shirt designs and stuff but this one's pretty funny because rocky and philly and everything so we will be reviewing rocky in a few weeks Mm -hmm. over on our patreon so we'd love some feedback when time comes for that but speaking of our patreon that's what keeps our lights on and uh now's a good time to support your boys you want to buy us a beer in philly but you're not going buy yourself some podcasts, patreon.com slash poison Rana. It's only five bucks to become a friend and you get access to all the podcasts that we do in that back catalog. There's so many different movie reviews. We've recently done kill bill. We've done retro wrestling. We recently did the second ever elimination chamber, SummerSlam. Oh three. Yeah. Uh, we also just did a profile on the nation of domination, talking all about Farouk, the rock and beyond that, which is great. Shout out PG 13. And then just this week, like Davey said, we put the first 45 to 50 minutes, I was very generous because it's a very long show, uh, over on our Poison Rana feed for free. Uh, we recorded a show, Best Match Ever, Sting, with Nate Milton, the icon. And then as soon as we finish and I look at the audio, we had our microphone on the wrong setting. And I sound like I'm in a spaceship or underwater. I sound like I'm in that Titanic submarine. So uh, I apologize for that. But the show is still listenable. But it, I it's feel a lot really better bad. than it was. Like, you know, I'm an audio guy. You I'm sound like, better than someone calling into a show. You don't sound like yeah, you're sounding now. I know, you know, but like you know, this is what I do, and I feel yeah. I feel awful. But at least the show is like it would be bad if it like show error did not save, which has not happened to us in a long time. So knock on wood. It, that. It's one. I always do this on like when I'm taking a big bag out and I look outside and like ah, it's not going to rain today, and I've got the tiniest umbrella that would easily fit in the bag anyway. Yeah. But I decide not to take it. And of course, it pours that day. I felt that because I was going to say, hey, should we record a track of Just Us just in case something yeah, goes yeah. wrong? Ah, uh, no, it doesn't matter. No, we're always Let's good. Let's do it. Yeah. Fuck. So uh, at least it's it's listenable. But, you know, uh, I can hear the, the, the thing. Yeah. And that's what, that's what kills me. But it's still listenable. And we had a great time. Nate Milton is so fucking great. And oh, he's fantastic. Man, if you're a Sting fan, this is the podcast for you. So, yeah, first 40 minutes or so for free on our free Poison Rana feed. But the rest of the show, which is like two more hours of us going through the whole career of Sting and some. So I'm talking Buckle Bombs, RoboCop, Surfer Sting, The Crow, everything. Mm -hmm. We talk about it all with Nate. So go check that show out and give us a a shout out and tell us what you think because 
we had a ton of fun looking back at the history of the Stinger, and we're super excited about uh, his big match this Sunday. We gave all our predictions last week, but uh, that's why we're like, should we just go to this thing? Fuck it. It's Sting. Let's go. I really want to. I know, right? The, sh- <laughs> the card looks great. The card looks great. So, again, give us a follow on all the other socials, and Patreon is only five bucks, so now's a good time than ever. We're... We're gonna need that beer money for for Philly, and that's uh, what will keep us going. So, and and maybe Greensboro, right? And Greensboro, we could have a yeah. hundred people sign up. That's what it takes. A hundred people, a hundred people sign up this week. We could go to, to <laughs> Revolution. So I was looking at the flights, and you, I could uh, kind of go straight from work Saturday night, right, to the airport to catch like a six a.m. flight. Yeah, go there. Like I'd land like mid afternoon. Yeah. scope out greensboro yeah i'm sure that there's a lot to scope out there but there might be maybe. i mean there's a coliseum can we ask john away for an advance <laughs> and yeah <laughs> and then um go to revolution stick around for the presser by the time that's finished i can go right back to the airport and catch a 6 a.m flight back because like tickets are not expensive there's, no tickets are they've good they've sold like sixteen thousand tickets it's yeah. crazy which is amazing but you can get like restricted view pretty cheap yeah as well let's go so, I, so I'm down. I want to go. Yeah. Sting. When when Sting going to retire again? Hey. Eh? <laughs> EC3 would like to have a word. Uh, I think he was the one who retired in the last time. Nah. nah <laughs> doesn't count. count. Doesn't count. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we're excited about Sting uh, going on this weekend with AEW. The pay per view looks pretty crazy, but wrestling as a whole is pretty crazy because AEW's then got big business coming up. Mm-hmm. And then they're coming to Toronto. I imagine it's Edge and Christian taking each other on in yep. Toronto for one more time, which. I cannot wait for it. So, yeah, uh, looking forward to it. So, uh, poisonrana.ca for also if you're in the Toronto area and you're going to Dynamite March 20th, come to our Sneaky D's Dynamite After Party because it's the return of wrestling karaoke. And oh boy, we are going to sing some songs and get Liddy. You're working on the the drink menu, the wrestling drink yes. menu. Yeah, I've been chatting to. To the billy goat himself oh yeah okay. oh yeah that's right <laughs> yeah oh my god this is hilarious uh we'll talk about nxt i swear but you you we need that on a t-shirt don't we? <laughs> we'll talk about nxt I swear. we'll get to nxt but yo hold on uh, <laughs> uh so so you were I, I assume you were working on the cocktail list for our dynamite after party and then you just went on on x as the kids say and mm-hmm. then you said at Will Osprey, I'm thinking of making it. What did you say? You said I, I, I'm bringing up the the tweet now because uh, you asked Will Osprey what kind of drink you should make after him. Which so what do you what would you think? I mean, it's got to be called the Os Cutter or the Stormbreaker or something. I say like the that. Dark and Stormbreaker. I like that. I like <laughs> the that. Dark and Stormy Breaker. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the Dark and Stormy Breaker. Uh, all the all the Os Cutter is a good name of like a shot, like cut cuts to the all right let's see if i can i'm still figuring out Streamyard, but here it is okay you got the tweet i do yeah so when hey uh will osprey (laughs) 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 i'm excited for you coming to toronto in a few weeks i'm creating an osprey inspired cocktail at my bar for that night would love you uh, to be inspired by your suggestions what kind of liquors and flavors do you like and he went vodka sweet tasting boys my hatred for canada is on the line lad (laughs) I howled when I saw this. So I said, don't worry, so mate. Good. I got you. I'm a fellow Brit too. Been infiltrating Canada from the inside for eight <laughs> years now. I got you, bruv. <laughs> so we need to link up with... Uh, Will, you need to come sing some songs. Davey's already asked to re- requested your theme song. So you got to you gotta show up, Will. So did you take his... So he, he wants something vodka and sweet vodka tasting. Cram. So a vodka... Cr- what, a Cape Cod? <laughs> yeah, a Cape Cod cutter. Uh, we need... Os, os cutter. Cu- Cape... Os... Cutter, I don't know. There's something there. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll come breaker. up with something. Something. So what it, is a dark and stormy? Basically, a girly drink is what we're. Yeah, it's all for right. There, it's, isn't it's, I'm, like, I'm imagining like you got to keep in shape and drinking beers isn't like you know you so don't cra- want to... crown ain't gonna help because that's full of sugar. Yeah, yeah. Splash crown's okay. Vodka soda splash crown, you know. Yeah, but we need something more interesting than that. That's a standard. Like, look, okay. I, I, I can definitely be someone who's like, oh, you want a beer? Yeah, man, give me a beer. It's, it's totally thing. And a Jack Daniels is my shit. But I have no, like, no shame in ever ordering like a vodka soda with a splash of crank because mm. it's like the, it's nice, it's tasty, yeah. and you don't, you don't feel bad after. So we need something a bit more creative yeah, than yeah, that. Yeah, 
the os cutter the dark and stormy breaker yeah working on it but yeah uh what we, we're excited about this party because we haven't hosted a like a really it should party. be gin being british but right yeah what's in the dark and stormy again anyways dark and stormy's dark rum ginger beer oh, okay splash mm. lime yeah he's not even a ginger is he yeah. No, it's it's that's too too much for our will. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. He wants a a Smirnoff Ice or a yeah, Blue probably. WKD. That yeah, kind of bless, thing. Bless, yeah. bless, bless some, bless anyone who wants. We have some pretty fru fruity drinks on our. Oh yeah, I'm time. I'm not one to judge. The Poiserana. I mean, the Red Rum was the sellout last time mm -hmm. we did one of these. You should bring it back. It was pretty good. The Red Rum. You should do one for Edge and Christian, like the five second pose. The concerto. The oh, the concerto. It's two two shots. <laughs> oh, oh you do two shots in a row like at, the no at the same time at the same time oh okay wow. uh <laughs> interesting yeah <laughs> uh i also uh so so come Could to that party to just canadian it's got to be canadian doesn't it yeah we'll, we'll figure it out we'll come yeah. up with it uh, let us know give us your recipes mm. for for drink ideas out in the world um so like i said wrestling's pretty hot right now i was able to check out some of raw uh specifically we gave all our thoughts on sunday on poison rana for the chamber so go check out that show if you haven't already again subscribe to poison rana but i checked out raw the drew segment where he sits down he would enjoy your maybe some of your drinks maybe not that osprey one but uh drew mcintyre with the Hey, Punk, I know you're straight edge, but because I won my match, I drank twice as much just to celebrate. <laughs> yeah, Drew, Drew's one. definitely a Scotch guy, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Scotch and beer, I feel, is yeah, out, Drew. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, great promo. Loving love this. his character. Yeah, the player hater of the year, Drew McIntyre. I'm definitely getting in, even more into it. Um, like, before, I, I really wasn't a huge fan of his as this, like, clean-cut baby face, but as he leans into just going off on cm punk and yeah. now seth as well like he's definitely and I, I felt this segment this week kind of we've been saying oh that they're, they're gonna somehow insert sammy or something like that i felt this segment this week solidified this no nope, we're getting the one-on-one -on -one singles and i'm okay with that like the more i think about it they've the changes they've done to drew um i think it does maybe feel fresher even though we had it fairly recently in saudi um but also i liked the the stuff with uh drew bring up the bloodline and how you know you shouldn't be focused on that and also the line you'll taint my victory um because you'll have the excuse of the bloodline and all that so i can definitely see that being some foreshadowing i think drew will win the title mm. it's just again it's his whole thing is he wants to win the title in front of people at mania obviously in his head as the baby face with everyone cheering whereas it's going to be yeah taboos and stuff which is is kind of cool a bit of a twist but yeah really enjoyed that segment um enjoyed the end with cody yeah cody cop killer mm -hmm. yeah stone cold cody Rhodes with all the what what cops did paul Heyman get taking out former up next guest aj kirsch that's right yeah. oh that wasn't john Pollock. no yeah right you've had him on years ago yeah. for what to talk about one 2K of the 19 i think we were wow yeah. long time ago and here he is on raw oh he was a somewhat of a wrestler before right yeah. he does a lot of stuff for the video games mm -hmm. and everything yeah yeah i noticed that right away uh yeah also love paul Heyman with the two phones yes paul's got two phones one for the rock and one for roman Reigns. so now they're really pushing the <laughs> the singles match with rock and cody which is yeah interesting yeah is it the rock versus cody Rhodes? like is this what are the they fuck? just still like teasing with us because you know seth seth keeps on saying like i've got your back i i'll be your shield and all that um very strange it's yeah very odd um weird i, I felt that way watching this promo i'm like uh Sounds like Paul Heyman's like, oh yeah, he's got the rock phone with the sticker, and he's like, he's the Dwayne is his boy now, so he does the business for him, and it's basically like, it's coming across like Cody wants to fight the Rock, so mm. that's how it came across, and the tag match still. So we're still guessing, which you know, like this event is gonna sell. Yeah. It has sold like crazy already. Yeah, it's it's not like you need to necessarily sell pay per views, you know, right? Um, so they're keeping us hanging on it. And yeah. I actually don't mind it because it is the TV is compelling at the moment, I think. And the guessing and the changing of the potential main events every week is is kind of fun and interesting to me. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, the other thing I thought um, about Raw yesterday is uh, we kind of got teased with Sammy versus Gunther 
And I was okay. Yeah. I'm down for that. And then they teased us with Chad Gable versus Gunther. And then they teased us with uh, Dominic Mysterio versus Gunther. And maybe perhaps even a Damien Priest cashing in on Gunther. So I kind of felt, are we either setting up some challenges along the way till WrestleMania for Gunther? Or are we going to have some sort of multi-man? And it, it looks like maybe that's the direction we're going, especially with uh, Logan Paul, Randy Orton maybe being a singles match. Maybe it is the IC title. That's the multi-man thing, yeah. which is a bit disappointing. I think the people involved are, are all great characters and very talented, but I, I do think I'd prefer the one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, yeah, very strange. Like Gunther, think about it. A few years ago, if this was 2010 when I was watching, you'd be like, yeah, none of these characters are as good and putting on as many you know, captivating stories for the IC title. But now it's Gunther with this run. It's like, no, he can't lose it in a multi-man ladder match unless they're like, no, we're going to keep him strong and never have him lose that. So that's his gripe as well. I never lost that title. So I'll just go out for a bigger one. If that's the route, okay. It's, but it does like, ah, uh, it's, like, it's difficult because you feel you want to pay off. Yeah. At the end be of shaming. this. Should be Seamus. But, well, I think, uh, I mean, Chad Gable as well. Like they did that great. And I thought he had a great promo this week on chatting to... Adam Pierce about his reasons for wanting to go for the title. Okay, again. so like we've talked about, what there might be like the Andre, the Battle Royal, yeah. and stuff like that. What about like a winner gets the shot? Does that kind of like? There's a lot of characters Could do that. that I, I I don't want of, these guys in a ladder match. Like they're wrestlers, right? Like yeah. a lot of these guys are. I mean, maybe it won't be a ladder match, right? Like maybe it will be a, a four way or something like that. Okay, but which would be great. Okay, but okay. I still think yeah. there's a bit more. There's something a bit more special about singles match, especially for yeah. Gunther. But I could see it being because think this is under sort of Triple H yeah. now, right? And he didn't want Asuka to lose, did he? Yeah. Before she moved up. So she just vacated it. Like he did that a few times with NXT call ups. Yeah. And it's yeah, you kind of don't have a payoff with this historic IC title run, which kind of sucks in a way. <laughs> yeah. But if the story is the undefeated um, Gunther. Gunther going for the world title or whatever. I mean, Bash in Berlin, he's definitely going for the title at that show So in the summer. So. Maybe it's a way of getting it off him. I mean, Dom's, Dom's grabbing that title off the ladder and winning it. Oh, it, it, yeah, it will be Dom. If <laughs> like, absolutely, Dom. But, There's no debate there. So. Yeah. But I'm kind of like, ah, because Sami Zayn versus Gunther one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania. That sounds like money. Gunther, Chad Gable, yeah, obviously it sounds good, but like they already kind of did it. Sheamus would be like the next big one, and I'm not sure. Maybe we're seeing Debar in AEW, but Sheamus versus Gun Sheamus versus Gunther. And like, look at me, I used to hate Sheamus, yeah. but he's been on a crazy run the last few years. So I, I think he's injured. Yeah, Is he not? I or think he's so. I'm he's not been sure. out for a little bit now, but um, or or you know, like he he retains it. I, I don't know, but yeah, I'm a little. I for the first time, I'm like, no, wait, I don't want you to do the multi. I love multi ladder matches. They're great, chaotic. They're great. But for the first time, I'm like, no, like Gunther, like man, I want to see you fucking chop someone's head off and suplex people. I'm not necessarily. And the fact we had the triple threat last year, it's yeah. like, oh, I want a just a big singles yeah. twenty minute. Gunther match. Yeah, you know? yeah. We'll we'll see. There's still time. Like there's 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 time. There's other matches they could put be putting because I also want to see some of these characters on the card. For sure. Right. Yeah. You want to see them get a payday and everything. So um, unless he does double duty as well. Who knows? That would be pretty cool too. I'm not like necessarily uh against that. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh so that's everything going on with wrestling. Again, poison rana, search it in your podcast app, Twitter, Instagram, all that for everything that we do but i think it's time we can talk about what we are here to talk about which is some nxt yes nxt from february 27th live from the capital wrestling center and we start with Ilya dragonoff in the ring and he says carmelo hayes you disgusting rodent of a man let's go i definitely love that opening <laughs> line you rodent of a man you rat uh, he says, I'm not ready to just stand around round, round and wait. This is stand and deliver season. So come out from your hiding place. And Mello comes out on the stage and he's Looking surrounded fresh. by security. Yes. he's. Did he call Paul Heyman's guys from yeah. Monday Night Raw? No, it's uh, Carmelo looking good with this white jacket. Mm. Very good. He says, uh, this is his security and they are here to do whatever I tell them to do. 
and you're still pissed off that I used you, that I may trick doubt you, or you make me sick. And I'm not stepping into that ring until Ava makes this match official, and I'll give you till the end of the night. So basically, Ilya's wanting a a face-to-face to confront Melo, and Melo's like, yeah, you can get that when it's for your title. Uh, Ilya then fights off a couple of members of the security. Mm. So that's kind of the the show long thread is this. Yeah, chase we'll get a we'll, we will get get to the end of the show with these two face to face yet again. We get an earlier today when we see uh, Ava being interviewed, and she says every show until stand and deliver is a big show. And Gigi Dolan comes and wants to talk about what's next for her. So she invites her into her office and Jada Parker is already in there wanting to talk about her future. And Gigi says, hey, you're jumping in the line. I was I was arranging a meeting. And Jada says, well, I don't wait for anyone. And uh, said the last time she checked, uh, Worldstar didn't mention Gigi Dolan's name. Ooh. And Ava just tells them both to get out and she'll sort them out one by one. So she referenced the World Star mm. thing because World Star randomly someone posted on there being like, "Yo, what's going on with WWE NXT? Mm. Who are who are these people that Shawn Michaels? Shawn Michaels, you think you're slick, huh? Okay, <laughs> we see you, Shawn. So now uh, that's what started a feud. Think about it. We've we've had we've had some strange matches built out of you know shampoo commercials and stuff, but mm-hmm. this is I was on World Star and you weren't. Yeah. Wow. Wrestling. She's Love. not wrong. Absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, we go to our first match of the night. Kalani Jordan taking on Kiana James with Izzy Dane in her corner. Uh, we get some nice just like uh, chain wrestling to start with. Kiana has this kind of head spring flip out with the wrist lock. Uh, Jordan then comes out the wrist lock with an Arabian moonsault and then a head scissor takedown. She then goes for a dive to the outside, but Izzy Dane gets in the way. So uh, Kalani hits them both with an acai moonsault, Whew. which looked really nice. This was insane. Shout out Kalani for hitting this beautiful, uh, like very, very clean looking. After the commercial, we see that Jordan's in control. Kiana comes back with a spine buster for a two. And then Kiana goes for a springboard. Sorry, uh, Kalani goes for a springboard as the referee's distracted. And Izzy pulls the ankle away. And she took quite a nasty bump here on the apron. Yeah, I thought she ate that apron. I hope she was all right. And then she gets rolled into the ring where Kiana hits her with the, uh, what she call it? The Bet365? No, what is this? Uh, no, that's the, uh, M- no, the, the 401k. The UB40? No, See, over here it? in Toronto, we have the 401, the highway. The B52? Uh, no, <laughs> no, the R2D2. Yeah, it's like the kind of eat defeat, but to the shin. Eat to shin. Oh, is it that move? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, she hits that and beats Kalani Jordan. Ah, I mean, Kiana definitely is was positioned. She's been that, that tag champion before, but I feel like she could be someone to kind of take that next step. And when they paired her with Izzy, I think that could be like the, the force that kind of puts her into maybe the next position. And we've lost Tiffany Stratton, mm. who like the characters are kind of similar, like, you know, rich, famous, kind of posh kind of thing. So, um, it's it's good that Tiffany's kind Tiffany of Tiffany Stratton wasn't caught drinking a glass of wine. Oh yeah, though, was she? that was the storyline, yeah. right? That she was drinking a glass of wine. Yeah, yeah true. Uh, but uh, not too bad. Kalani is super impressive. Again, I think I could see a lot. I see a lot in both of these two when it comes to NXT and WWE as a whole. So uh, nothing like too insane, except for that moonsault. That was really. I, nice. I thought the wrestling here was pretty nice. Uh, I liked them kind of just trading back and forth to start with and yeah so, some nice spots i think my my thought is with both of them is we've seen kiana in this gimmick for a long time now and there really hasn't been much development and it's not as interesting as a tiffany stratton it's not as fun as a tiffany stratton yeah. character so i need to see a bit of an evolution because she's been doing this for two years now yeah and yeah. And it's a kind of bland character now, I feel. The Titan Tron is a helicopter and it's like, well, it's not a real helicopter. No. You're not that rich. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's, I need to see some, like, something change. And and I'd say the same with Kalani as well. She's just a very bland baby face. Right. Like, I, I want to start seeing a bit more come out of them. Just turn heel but with re- Mello. <laughs> wrestling wise, wrestling wise, I thought, um, I thought this was good. Heel Kalani with Carmelo Hayes? 
she, no. No, I, I don't like she's a natural baby face and we should explore that. But right. at the moment, she's just kind of a bit of a goody two shoes, like Disney Channel. Yeah, character, oh, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, oh, Booker T's back. Oh, yeah. Sorry. We have to reference that. Shout out, Byron. We love you, uh, mm. Byron, kind of, sort of. Uh, but uh, hope his mustache is keeping well. But uh, Booker T, the king is back. King Booker. Yes. He's back. And um, are you ready for it? He's on one tonight? Yes, he was. Okay. Because he said some great things later tonight. First of all, uh, he loved Gigi Dolan versus Jada Parker. <laughs> <laughs> Shucky ducky, quack, quack. Any spoilers there? But uh, we, need, we need to start having Shamel from row again. Don't we? <laughs> yeah, keep him, <laughs> keep him in check. Uh, I have some other ones written down, but as we go on, I'll read them. Uh, we get a last Tuesday where we see Roxanne. Uh, we saw her storm out and trash the TV during the women's title match last week. This is her a bit later where she's looking mad because, and she's saying, well, first it was Tatum and Lola. And now like I missed my chance because I'm having a shower. Um, and one of the kind of next in line girls yeah. that we don't really know yet goes to pick the TV. Are they in the calendar? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Goes to pick the TV up and Roxanne says, leave it. <laughs> this is where Jakara Jackson comes in and says, look, Lash is always ready, unlike you. And Rox says she wasn't ready. It was just right place, right time. And Jakara said, yeah, well, you lost your title and Lash had two matches and etc yeah and they start to brawl and it sets up a match for later tonight she, like okay so there's like they're doing the drew mcintyre thing because roxanne is like angry because first she had her match then lola interrupted in it and inserted herself in it and then got pinned and then roxanne is on like a bit of a winning streak and then as she wins a match and goes to shower lash has a match afterwards and then the next match after there's an injury. So Ava sees Lash still in her gear. Storyline wise and realistic, they took a real thing. We're like, mm -hmm. well, you're actually still dressed because it was towards the end of a taped show that Lash was put in. So they went with, hey, Roxanne, you didn't get that because you weren't still in your gear. So right here, Jakara says to her like, oh, well, maybe you should have kept your gear on for like, you never know. Like, yeah. You know, always have your gear in your car yeah. kind of thing, right? So like you were, you shouldn't have showered you yet. stayed and watched the rest exactly. of the show. Exactly. Yeah. What, like of all people, Jakara Jackson, who's like somewhat new here and like very like not an established, you know, character on her own. But for her to have that line, I was like, damn, that was wild. Yeah, I, I kind of got the feeling over the course of this show and last week that um metaphor returning baby face i i guess so because you had yeah. but like here you've got roxanne who is you're right like it's the drew thing she's completely kind of correct in everything she's angry about but just being a bit of a dick about it and being a bit of a whiner which yeah. which puts you off so she's not done anything like ultimately heelish yet like she's not attacked anyone when they're down or anything like that but the attitude kind of turns us the wrong way yeah you yeah. know and jakara kind of rightly putting her in her place lash legend stepping up last week and i think impressed a lot of people with that and especially at that short notice and then we get to the main event later where you feel dar was kind of screwed out of that as well so yeah i think you know they're a, they're a fun act why not let's move them to more baby face they can still be annoying baby faces yeah but. yeah they'll be fun like they're funny and they could capitalize on yeah. some of that stuff um so we've got the song year of the vulture by the wonder years which is going to be the theme the wonder years of uh, uh -oh. jason Sand hervey I oh, guess don't do so. this to me again i guess so you got to listen to our sting podcast to hear us talk all about everything it's it's like the number 23 dude <laughs> you reference the wonder years and all of a sudden i'm like oh no jason hervey just don't say simon gotch right just <laughs> <laughs> and then you go and say it. I've ruined everyone's algorithms. <laughs> like, like there's there's a seven. What is it? Seven degrees of Kevin Bacon, mm -hmm. but like seven degrees of Jason Hervey that just keeps coming into. You I, are three degrees from Kevin Bacon because you know someone who knows. I, uh, yeah, it was directed by James Purefoy, who was in the following with Kevin Bacon. Okay, so then, and you do up next with me. Yeah, <laughs> so you're three degrees. Uh, I read, speaking of Kevin Bacon, did you hear this just yes, two days ago that Kevin Bacon found out that his wife of like long wife of so many years is actually like distant cousin of his. Oh. So his, his wife is actually uh, one degree of Kevin Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's his fucking cousin. Once removed degree Jeez. of Kevin Bacon. Wouldn't that suck? What do you do after I all? I mean, I guess... Like, it's like so removed. Yeah, you're not blood related, yeah. I guess, that I, way, is it? Somehow, I don't know. I haven't read that deep into the, the story, but I did see that the other day. I was like, huh, that's weird. It's like, what, you did your, like... 23 and me or whatever the what's yeah, the, yeah, yeah. like i kind of want to do one of them my dad's done it my family have done it. i kind of want to do it yeah too, but they'll let's just, do it they'll just tell me i'm more you should do Scottish. it and reveal it on uh behind the bd <laughs> all right yeah 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 it's just gonna tell me like my portuguese ancestry has more scottish yeah. possibly like you know who knows what but yeah i mean um imagine that like you're married to someone for years and then they're like hey you want to do your like DNA and then the trees, it's like the bloodline yeah, yeah. tree with Roman reigns in the rock. It connects and you're like, huh, it's kind of weird. Maybe that's why our kid has 11 toes. Mm. <laughs> Did you know Kevin Bacon? Not actually made of bacon. Ah, uh, we go to our next match. The good brothers. Yes. The OC, wow. the bullet club, Gallows and Anderson, <laughs> Festus and Anderson. Are we talking shop? <laughs> yes. So that Vic brought up the talking shop line uh tonight on commentary yes the we... two luckiest <laughs> bastards in wrestling <laughs> i call these guys that i call these guys the luckiest dudes man like they know how to they know how to coast and make money man uh but you know what they always they look good it's not like they like let themselves go these guys are actually still in shape they've been on tv yeah. lately so it's not like they're coming out. They've here. been on TV. They ain't been wrestling, but they've <laughs> no, been on no. TV. I don't know if they did that here either tonight. Yeah. No, uh they, 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 they did a little bit, but I mean, just so funny. I can't, I've said it. I'm going to say this every time I, I have to talk about the Good Brothers. I can't knock the hustle. No. <laughs> so say what you will about their wrestling and whatever, but you cannot knock the hustle because they are, they're, they're getting paid, guys. And I mean, I got to support my bald brothers who have facial hair. So shout out, shout out these guys. And he, I love how Festus is rocking his Kevin Nash gear, his big diesel gear that yeah. he, He's worn for a long time, but he had the Rudy Giuliani going on during this match. His <laughs> his fake the tan drip. was just dripping, <laughs> dripping off his face. Like, yeah, God bless these guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love these guys, but like, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, um, they're taking. I mean, I know what they're doing here, but it's no. You know yeah. what they're? Uh, sorry, how much you pay me? Sure, why not? Yeah. Send us back to fucking TNA, whatever. <laughs> Just pay me. We're still under contract. Doesn't matter. Yeah. I'll do it. Do whatever. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is all easily for the reasoning of what Wrestling Observer is reporting. Tamatanga showing up here in NXT is happening very, very soon. And I mean, them showing up last week definitely tipped us off that that could be relevant. And that's something that is being reported now. So I imagine these two, uh, which we talk about even later, they're going to have a match right now. But then, like, they have a promo, which leads me to believe they do have someone coming in for them, which would be Tamatanga. So, yes, another retread of a Bullet Club. Yeah. In WWE. So many of them. Like, not just WWE, everywhere. Yeah. AEW, TNA, New Japan. Yeah, there everywhere. is, like, different variations. I'd say that the AEW guys have moved away from it. They've moved away from Bullet Club. The, the, yeah, the guns, they're doing more the bang right? bang. Right there, there's the bang bang. Because think about it, Bullet Club, bang bang gang. It's yeah. the same, it's the two, you know. It's yeah, like a stinky collision pink, cowboys. The stinky pinky. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that, they're just coming up with all these different names. There's, yeah, collision cowboys is like, what, NWO Wolfpack? Like, I red and so, white? Yeah. Like, it's some weird. I or love more, more NWO B team. I don't know. Like, I fucking <laughs> love it. <laughs> Get more ridiculous yeah. and I'll buy your stupid shirt. <laughs> But did you see Max Caster just fucking? Yeah, he just gave up. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it, but he, he's a fucking funny guy. <laughs> it, it, uh, when I used to do uh, theater, it's when someone blanks on stage. Yeah. There's this look, and I've given the look, I've seen the look where you're waiting, like, I'm waiting for you to say your line and you've forgotten it. Yeah. I'm waiting. And then you just give a look that just says, <laughs> I'm not saying shit. I'm not saying anything. You're going to help me. <laughs> and that's what Max did. He yeah. was like, nope. You guys are trash. Like you're something. And nah. nah. <laughs> <laughs> He's put out a video today, like rapping and like shitting on himself and stuff. But he, he'll be he'll be fine he's done it before and it was a tape on show. a rampage this yeah. is the first time and like how many times have we said like dude he's gonna mess this oh, up yeah. one day like yeah. it's it's hard you know what it is is trying to hear it the oh. beat right trying to hear it and concentrate while like 
with no. the crowd and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, because it's not like he has a like in ear monitor or anything, exactly. is it? Like it's yeah, it's tough. I, 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 you know, I, I love watching live music performances, and sometimes I watch, you know, Kimmel or Fallon in the music performances or SNL for that thing. And and just I think just this week I was watching SNL and the music performance. He was you could tell right away he was fucking up. He's like, ah, oh, goddamn it! Like, yeah, I can't. I'm not on. I need or how to often you hear like Alicia, Alicia Keys? Keys. <laughs> you start off key and it's oh, that that's oh, yeah. where we are. Okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, this guy's rapping about like wrestling shit. But yeah, like, <laughs> but like it was pretty funny. No, Max Caster, Alicia I, Keys. He should he should be Grammy collaborate nominated. with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I I I did I did like that. <laughs> but anyways, back to the Good Brothers. Yes. So it's the Good Brothers <laughs> versus Malik Blade and Idris Enofe. Uh, as soon as this starts, Booker T is like, I really want to like these guys, <laughs> and Malik and Idris, but filling in the blanks but i don't yeah yeah <laughs> it's like man i really want to like these guys i just they i they need to work more booker that. t comes back and in like 10 15 minutes he's already shitting on the new kids and telling him us that the good brothers should win this one. yeah <laughs> uh there's a double drop toe hold and drop kick from idris and malik um i thought malik's grade uh sorry malik's gear was an upgrade today like having slightly nicer kind of tight yeah going on. they did yeah um, Gallows and Anderson isolate Malik, beating him down in the corner. Uh, he eventually gets the tag to Idris, who hits a big drop kick to Gallows, a reverse sling blade, and then throws Gallows out the ring. Uh, there's a running knee from Anofe, and then a jackhammer yeah. to Carl Anderson. Idris and Anofe hitting him with a huge move here. Very impressive. Gallows then throws Blade into the ring steps. Anofe goes for a 450. Uh, but rolls through and gets hit with a spine buster from Anderson. And then it's the magic killer from the Good Brothers for the one, two, three. So the Good Brothers in about, I don't know, eight minutes, 10 minutes here, did more wrestling than they did in their entire last run at Impact Wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they didn't do too much, but hell, like I said, they they are still like in shape. They're not like just two guys that mm. don't necessarily can't do this i did find it funny carl anderson is doing chin locks when it wasn't even the picture in picture yeah. but i mean maybe it's just nxt we don't see we see them but i see you carl doing those chin locks but then he's hitting some cool looking you know he was eating the moves for the, from the other guys and he did some stuff but yeah i i just feel i've seen malik and idris in this po position for every far week. too long now every yeah it's every uh, month like i feel they were here just before 2.0 started perhaps or it's, if it's not possible. like right as it started so we're talking like three years two and a bit years it's, it's and they've been like just jobbing a lot it's interesting because they they made the magic killer look insane like idris sold this magic killer looked awesome which i'm like wow this move is, is pretty cool but uh they've just been the jobbers here they've just been the like enhancement talent the the Raul Mendoza's uh, award goes to these two for the last few years because, like, they've been the enhancement talent in NXT, and it's a, it's kind of a shame because maybe it's the like what the acting, the the character or lack thereof. But when it comes to wrestling, like, they could be wrestling on on main roster. Like, they they put on pretty exciting matches. Hell, they made somewhat of a match of the Good Brothers mm. here. So, like, you know, like they are they are someone. I'm like, ah, if if they did a whole like which the tag team division isn't really much with other than the, the other stuff going on with as soon as you bring in the good brothers and they job, it's like, why would people care about them? I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I, I see them maybe eventually getting their moment kind of like the street profits, street profits were in that jobber role yeah, for a long for a while. time, weren't they? And yeah. then finally had that moment with the, the ladder match and stuff. And but it's, and there's, there's other characters in NXT who were like, you know, even solo characters that were just like always the jobber. And then finally like, yeah. okay, well there's no one else around here. Oh, you know how to wrestle. Okay. You're like, you're the spot, right? Look what they did with like Josh Briggs, even just randomly yep. like, Oh, you know what? We're going to put you well, in this match. Well, you know? Yeah. So chase you then come out and, uh, say, Hey, uh, well you interrupted and jumped us from behind last week. So you'll learn that karma is a bitch. And this week, our backs aren't turned. And it's time for an Andre Chase University size ass, ass whooping, whooping uh, when they're, they're interrupted by the annoying European lads, uh, <laughs> Nathan Fraser and Axiom, who said, yeah, you jumped us from behind too. And at least uh, LWO would come and face us face to face. 
And then them and Chase U are fighting over who gets to face the Good Brothers next when uh, the LWO attack the Good Brothers from behind. And there's an all-out brawl as the Wolf Dogs are watching on from the perch. The Wolf Dogs on the perch. Yeah. Oh, uh, so all these teams fight in a ladder match at Stand and Deliver. Is that what this is going towards? Um, Because we see something later. That... Yeah, so we've got a tag match. So what, a... Well, Chase U has the tag title match next week mm. against the Wolf Dogs. And the Good Brothers are basically like, we're here to take these titles. So, so that's what, five teams? There's LWO. LWO, Chase U, Gallows and Anderson, Axiom, Axiom Nathan Fraser. Fraser, and Wolf Dogs. It's five teams. Yeah. Is there, Idris, I mean, Idris and Malik just lost, so probably not. Yeah. Them, but... So what, a five-team, a 10-person ladder match or Fuck something? It. Can you do okay. that in 2K24? <laughs> probably, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we're seeing the tag match next week, but like I assume we do get some sort of multi-tag match. I don't want the Good Brothers versus the Wolf Dogs at NXT, but that's probably what it's going to be. That's the end of the level. It's... Yeah. It's funny though, or, or like it could be. I don't know if you'll get all these teams in it, but maybe why not? Like if it's a ladder match with all these guys in it, you have Gallows and some of the bigger guys, Corbin Braun, to like you know be the base for some of the crazy stuff. Yeah, with the ladders that Braun will spear through a ladder. Like Nathan Frazier and Axiom come in here to interrupt, and I swear if you put Axiom on the shoulders of Nathan Frazier and put a trench coat on them and a hat, they still wouldn't be as tall as Luke Gallows. Yeah. <laughs> We're here for a ticket to a rated R movie, sir, and he, he's still taller than them. But there could be some fun stuff between but them. But I think uh, LWO being involved as well is good. Like, I'd love to see them at Sound and Deliver as well. They've, they've had a pretty good run this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, we see Ava in the office when Obafemi comes in and says, all I want to know is the name of my next victim. And this is where Ilya Dragunov comes in as mm. well. And they stare at each other. And Femi just laughs and walks off. And Ilya says, Ava, we need to talk. <laughs> I mean, this is foreshadowing a future potential match, right? Oba Femi and Ilya Dragunov, these two. Yes. This is a big NXT matchup yeah. down the line that maybe we'll get one day. Uh, we see Roxanne Perez taking on Jakara Jackson. Uh, there's a springboard moonsault from Rox where she lands her legs right on top of Jackson. Look pretty nice. Goes for the pop rocks, but Lash grabs Jakara's hands to protect her. So the ref says, you are out of here and sends Lash Legend to the back. Uh, Jakara and Roxanne start slapping each other and then Perez applies the cross face, her new submission for the win. Yeah, uh, not too much out of Jakara. I think we've seen more out of her here, but... Roxy was impressive. That moonsault was nuts. Mm. The double like springboard, very nuts. Uh, and I, I'm liking the edgier Roxy. Uh, we kind of said earlier, if Jakara and the rest of Metaphor kind of turn more babyface, I think it could be a more popular, like turning Lash. Lash has kind of been teasing it already with like body slamming Otis yeah. like, months back or whatever. But yeah, uh, I didn't think too much of it, but that moonsault was pretty nice, which was similar to the match earlier. It They're just kind of doing kind of squash matches for Roxanne in this new gimmick, I guess. Um, I think it's working better for her than when she was trying to be, you know, when she was feuding with Kiana and needed to show her mean aside and was having the the hardcore matches. I wasn't quite buying it. Whereas yeah. I, I think it's, she's starting to fit into it well and her her wrestling is showing a mean aside as well, incorporating the cross face now yeah, it's as like another finish. The side rushing into the yeah. cross face. So at least it's something different. But I mean like it's reminding me of the bank statement. Cause it's like she sure. would do the move into the move. Yeah. And it's like, man, there's so many other submissions yeah. out there. Wouldn't you just pick something a bit more like, you know, flashy, creative? There's something no one else does. Yeah, I mean we we've I'm gonna say it again later in the show, but yeah. we're becoming a broken record. There's just so many samey moves yeah. and i don't know if it's just what they're teaching the pc or what but there's there's not a whole load of flashy finishes right now in yeah. nxt and it's everyone kind of has the same kind of dull stuff yeah it's like opening up finisher move set and just going through like the, the basics yeah and giving everyone the same thing so maybe it's not until your main roster when you get flashier mm. stuff and like yo like the names of them are lame i'm sorry like the 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 one Lyra has been calling the night wish mm. like okay if it's Soraya night doing it the night whatever okay but 
the dra Operation Dragon. <laughs> yeah. There's some weird ones. There's some weird ones. <laughs> I'm also, I don't know about renaming moves that just already have a name all the time. Yeah, well, I mean, with RKO, Diamond Cutter, kind of the same move, but kind of not. Kind of jumps. With yeah. It. yeah. Yeah. He's at, yeah. Add your own flair to old moves, right? Or like when you could create a move in your wrestler, can you still create in 2K24, create moves? I so you can do anything. You, you just do like 20 transitions just to like hit a kick to the yeah, ball. To, to the eye. <laughs> <laughs> we see Thea Hale backstage with JC Jane and, fuck, get the calendar. Um, JC Jane and the Chase You girls. The Chase You girl. Yeah, the, the one who's been hanging around with JC. Uh, Jasmine. Jasmine, yes, Jasmine. <laughs> and they're asking if he called back, if Riley called Thea back. And they're like, oh, yeah, he did. And they're saying, you don't chase them, they chase you, which I thought was I quite thought a good that line. was a pretty funny line, yeah. <laughs> and Thea goes, no, no, it wasn't actually him that called me. I called him. And, well, Riley said that the girl on the date wasn't the girl that he liked. And, you know, now he just wants to be friends. And he wanted the cute bubbly Thea Hale. Thea Hale. And JC goes, Yeah, well, that Thea was a loser. Wow. And you see Thea being like, Oh, what what? And JC says, Yeah, no, not not the new one, but the old Thea. That was a she was a loser. Thea says, Well, I was asking Fallon about what she thinks. And they go, Oh, please. Fallon Henley, she begs people to be friends with her and calls her a loser. And she said, look, the old Thea desperately needed help too, but she's a loser. And Thea asks about Andre Chase and Duke Hudson. They're losers oh. as well. Everyone's losers. Oh. And she says, look, they're all losers. I saved the uni. And then Kiana James comes in and is like, hey, congratulations with that calendar you made. Sorry I'm three weeks late, but yeah, well done yeah. on that. Yeah. And She's like, oh, you know, it was nothing. And they're like, hey, she was asking about Fallon Henley. And Kiana goes, ah, yeah, she's a fucking loser. <laughs> <laughs> Former tag champion. Um, so Kiana then goes, hey, can you can you tell me how to make a calendar? So yeah. that <laughs> <laughs> She basically is like, hey, let's do some business. Like, I, what if you could help me with a calendar? <laughs> and like, it's fucking March. You, know? <laughs> like, you just found out about calendars? <laughs> this is why you need G back. Yeah. G would have had calendars. Jeez. Okay. The so so they leave Thea on her own, and she just says, "A loser? Seriously?" So yeah, very classic '90s, 2000s team rom com where she was cool all along. The original Thea Hale was fine. That's what Riley really wanted, and then JC turned her into you know a plastic, yeah, essentially Mean Girlsing it, and then Riley's like, "No, that's exactly what happens in Mean Girls, right?" Like Aaron is like, "Oh, actually, you're kind of a." You're kind of gross. Yeah. You're a bitch. So I don't like you. You're mean. So, so that's what's happening. Thea's going to realize that, you know, maybe she's been hanging around with the wrong people. She'll forgive Andre Chase for throwing in the towel. I, she'll wear the cheerleader outfit again. I'm telling you right now. The boy. No, I need her to be like, Riley, look, uh, you're right. That wasn't the real Thea. Like the real Thea is this. Like, please give me another chance. He's like, oh, I'll think about it. And then she catches JC with Riley. And then he's with her. And it's like a whole turn. Oh, man. Yeah. And then what? Thea ends up with? Degrassi NXT continues. Duke. Duke. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bodie Hayward comes back. What's Bodie doing these days? Oh, yeah. I remember him. Yeah, bless. Wow. So, uh, <laughs> Bron, the Wolf Dogs, Bron, Cor Bron Breaker and Baron Corbin are backstage. And Bron's like, oh, man, are you sure you don't want me to spray paint your leather jacket? Holy shit, this guy he makes me laugh every week. This was killing me. And Bron's like, sorry, Corbin is like, no, it's not spring break 1999. Yeah. <laughs> uh, He's I, telling him to tan. Yeah, him. where's your tanner? Get everything. He could have asked uh, Luke Gallows for some. I know. Well, Luke Gallows then comes in with Carl Anderson. And they ask Baron, oh, how is it here in NXT? <laughs> and Corbin's like, yeah, you know, I found myself. Bron's like, he found himself. <laughs> and he went, yeah, and I, I won the NXT Tag Team Championship all by myself. And Bron's like, yeah, all by him. Wait, what? <laughs> and Corbin's like, nah, I'm joking. Like, we're pals now. And Gallo says, oh, these are the champions. Huh, this is going to be easier than I thought. <laughs> and Anderson says, yeah, coming here has lit a fire in us. And Corbin goes, well, yeah, last week you called me a comedian, but 
You know what was funny? The sound your face made when AJ slapped it. Ooh. And Bron talks about when the bell rings. We're like, we're playing about now. But when that bell rings, the dogs come out. <laughs> and Gallows and Anderson go, yeah, well, we're waiting. So clearly eyeing up the NXT tag titles. I love how just Gallows just says it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is going to be easier than I thought. Because we were like, yep, yeah, we'll just they they lean into like that right like oh we don't give a fuck <laughs> and we'll realistically <laughs> all four of these guys would hang yeah, out yeah 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 <laughs> they probably did after they yeah. probably are drinking out right now yeah. <laughs> once a dog always a dog gone to wall street in, oh sweet. that's orlando yeah, yeah, where yeah. Are they? in orlando yeah wall street isn't it that's kissing me yeah. yeah they're they're out they're out having a great time yeah. roo, roo, roo. <laughs> bullet club bullet club wolf dogs <laughs> Fuck it. Put them together. At this point, at this point, they'd be like, actually, we don't want the titles. We could just be both. We could just yeah. be friends. We could just hang out. Pay us. Yeah. <laughs> we see have a shot of uh no quarter catch crew training. Who's gonna be in the main event tonight? You've That's got right. one lifting dumbbells. I think Damon Kemp's skipping. You've got Charlie Dempsey doing the the stick like Iron Sheik. Yeah, I was gonna it? say like, Sheiky baby. Yeah. Uh so all these guys are training for potentially a match. Yes. You don't do do they know who's gonna wrestle? I guess they didn't want to just show one guy training to be like yeah, it's gonna be him. Yeah, they're so. always ready. Did you see the videos of Dragonov training? He's been posting on his social media of Ilya Dragonov like showing his extreme workouts, which are crazy. But he's doing like crazy stuff on his neck and head, isn't he? Mello Mello tweeted before the show tonight, like, yeah, I, yeah, I saw those Ilya training videos, and that's why I'm bringing protection. And then the first segment is him with all the security guards. So basically, he's like, "Oh shit, this guy's fucking, this guy's fucking Jack. This guy's nuts. He does like crazy skipping. He looks like he's training to fight like Vegeta or Frieza or something. He's <laughs> next level insane." But I did like the catch crew guys. So we have the no quarter catch crew, and then uh, no catch Republic, no catch banana, no quarter catch Republic point. Yeah, it's stupid. <laughs> stupid. Right. So our next match, we have Luca Crucifino, the lawyer. The people's lawyer. Against Dijak, Batman. Okay, yeah. So Dijak basically has attempted murder mm. quite a few times yeah. on TV. On TV, tweeting yes. about it. He's been he literally said, tune in because I'm going to kill this guy on TV. So then uh, this lawyer saw this and showed up in Arkham Asylum or wherever the hell Dijak took. He, kid he he threw Gacy off a roof and Gacy survived. They fought in a match and Gacy survived. So then he he put him in a body bag. No, he put him in a straight jacket, straight jacket and then locked him, in a glass cell. Yeah, it took him to like a, a, a place. And then Crucifino showed up somehow and saved him and said, it's illegal. I don't care about your silly world, Dijak. But basically like being, you know, Dijak's Batman here. Yeah. And Gacy's the Joker. And now we have this Harvey Dent lawyer in the mix here. So this is basically the Dark Knight. Shawn Michaels just finally watched the Dark Knight. He was like, that was pretty good. <laughs> you guys can, should do this. Let's do that. And then uh so now it's set up the match. Sadly, Crucifino, look, there's a there's a a, a a negative and a positive here. Crucifino no longer uses the people's court theme. Right. However, they just got a knockoff remix version of yeah. it, so it's it's pretty funny. So he comes out, and he who's been a a heel in the past was coming across. He's a lawyer. He's definitely yeah. A but he was a baby face in this match yeah, here. Yeah. Um, Imagine trying to cheer for this lawyer. So uh, Luca hits this baseball slide that sends Dijak flying across the announce table. Thus, knocking over Booker T's drink all over his oh, notepad. Oh, he was furious. He did not sound happy. Like, first night back, and this guy... You think they just, like, read this guy? It's funny, because when this team, like, Vic and Book, started, you could tell Vic was kind of, I don't know, intimidated sure. or whatever. So something like this would happen, and Vic would be like, ooh, hey, are you okay? He'd be like, I'm fine, I'm fine, okay. Whereas now Vic, like... Is comfortable enough with him where he's like, oh, are you okay there, book? Oh, Ooh, you got oh, your, your drink notepad your got notepad. a little wet there. <laughs> uh, Jack evades this back suplex landing on his feet and then uh, hits this big lariat. Uh, Crucifino fights off the choke slam, delivers some clotheslines of his own, and then gets knocked down by Jack, hit with a big belly to back suplex. Um, they're giving 
uh, Crucifino quite a bit of offense here. Yeah, like and first keeps on big like time. countering Diojack's moves as well. Yeah, he looked all right. Like considering you know he's wrestled on level up, but this is his big first like match on NXT TV. But like we've seen him, yeah, what in the the tournament and yeah, but yeah. real quick. But yeah, I thought yeah. this was the most we got out of him here. Uh, unfortunately, he then gets hit with the Cyclone Boot and Feast Your Eyes, and Dijak wins. But like he put up a fight, and Vic Joseph was really like selling, like, "Hey, this guy is good." Like, look, he put up a fight against Dijak. He's a lawyer. Isn't yeah, I got kind of early t- Tony D'Angelo vibes here, where a l- it's a lot of character, a bit of just punching and kicking, but some nice, like, really nice looking suplexes and stuff. Where I actually see more from this guy. Um, afterwards, we see Joe Gacy run out. He's broken out of his cage and he's half out of the straight jacket. And uh, Crucifino then hits Dijak from behind with a crowbar, and Dijak and Gacy fight to the back. And then, I mean, they eventually announce it. We might as well say it here next week at NXT Roadblock. It is an asylum match. Yes. <laughs> so, Dijak taking on. Joe Gacy is, I think we were saying this is probably leading to something like this. Have we seen this before? So Dean Ambrose, Dean Ambrose and Jericho, Jericho. And it's a weaponized cage, right. basically, which I think we called last week. But yeah, yeah. Um, not the TNA, what, red dome thing. No, TNA's done what the Ravens match where it was a half a cage and like weapons on it. Or okay. Something like that. So Ravens House of Fun or something like that. But, but didn't, didn't TNA have an asylum? I'm sure, you know, I mean, TNA, TNA wrestled that. It was Asylum Days, essentially, like the okay. place they wrestled that. I thought there was like a red dome. You're thinking of like thing. Lethal Lockdown or something. I don't know. Uh, this thing. You need to watch this. More, what is that? Well, what is that from? Is Asylum that, Match. That's, yeah. Oh, yeah. is that where you have to escape the ex, ultimate uh, X? Ex- I don't know. Um, Anyways, the lawyer. Is- but with Crucifino attacking as well, like, okay, we've got Batman. We've got the Joker. Yeah. Is Luca Crucifino Harvey Dent? Yeah, he is. Yeah. So, in which case, he's going to join with Gacy. He and, is with Gacy now, but become more like evil. You know, <sighs> who who's pouring acid on his face is what I'm asking. Okay, uh, like this guy's given a lawyer gimmick, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's why it's taken so long to actually be wrestling on TV because, like, we're not in 1994 WWF anymore. Like, you don't just mm-hmm. need to have a career a side job yeah. in wrestling. I looked this guy up. He did technically go to law school. He didn't. Okay. He, he's not a lawyer, but he went to law school. So I'll say that he's he's got you know he's some background. He's really young. He's 23 apparently. Really? Wow. Uh, Wikipedia. So uh, this guy's done a lot more than than me and you. He's been through like you know, some sport, some sports. He's one of the, like the, what I guess next in line or something mm. similar to that when he was brought in here, but he went to law school. So he's got some sort of thing. And like, we don't have a lawyer gimmick in WWE right now. Otunga has been gone for years. So like you could do this. I think Otunga's still employed. Isn't really? No, I think so. That'd be weird. Um, like, yeah, I, the guy didn't look bad. And right now, like it or not, we're in Arkham Asylum, Batman versus Joker. And for some reason, Harvey Dent, the lawyer, is involved. And so next week is this match. Are we getting? Will we be getting full Two Face down the line? That's what I'm asking. <laughs> um, do we even have like Joe Gacy? Doesn't wear like face paint or anything, but like no, but he needs to. You know, will he start flipping a coin or something to decide? Is that like too like <laughs> on the nose? Fuck like it. man, like... we got good fellas. D'Angelo for the last three years. Just like Sean's just going through IMDb top movies and picking gimmicks. Yeah. <laughs> He's just like, huh, let me watch this movie and get inspired by <laughs> certain things. I mean, NXT, wrestling always does that, right? Like, look, there's fucking Zoolander. Yeah. The most obscure things can turn into characters, yeah. right? So I don't know. I'm. It's wrestling, so I'm somewhat like interested in this asylum match call me crazy but like i'm excited to see what the hell this could be so after that we see the family tony d'angelo stacks and rizzo are watching it and and tony says remember last week he he seemed a bit more serious when stacks you see that go get him stacks like right now not right now we've got bigger business but after go get him luca crucifino so i assume he's talking about getting Luca Crucifino and trying to get him in with the family or like the personal lawyer. He's their sole Goodman kind of thing. Right. 
Mm. Um, but they've got bigger issues to. He's worked with them before, I think. Uh, I think he gave his card to them once, right, something right. like that. Interesting. All right. So we then see uh, Metaphor, Noam Dar, and Oro Mensa, and Kelly Kincaid walks in on them, and Noam kind of chokes on his drink and says, "Ah, I've still got PTSD from the sneak attack." Sneak attack. Yeah. Um, and he's asked who he wants to face tonight. And he says, we are metaphor. We are ready for anything. Earlier tonight, Jakara Jackson took Roxanne to a limit. Last week, Lash Legend fought twice and almost beat the champ in her second match. So we've got this. We're really good at almost winning is what I got <laughs> from this. He goes, it could be Papa Drew. It could be New Guy. It could be Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. It <laughs> doesn't matter. Well, now over to you, Vic and Booker. And then says, ah, that's something I've always wanted to say. Yeah, Noam always makes me laugh. I like how he says check, please, yeah. also as one of his sign-offs. Uh, again, he's like a heel that you enjoy, so maybe a baby face turn wouldn't be the yeah. worst thing to happen. We then uh, see Lyra Valkyria, who comes out, and she wishes Shotzi a speedy recovery, and she promises that when she's back, she owes her a title shot, and also gives Lash her flowers for stepping up last week, it says I've got the battle wounds to prove it. I promised I would be here as champ, I'm a woman who keeps her promises and I made Tatum a promise. And she says, no one was as shocked as me when uh, Tatum didn't come out last week. So I applaud her. Asks Paxley to come out who enters through the crowd. And she says, oh, last week was so hard staying in the back. But seeing my sweet dove in danger of losing her title. Sweet dove. And Lyra says, but I didn't. And you did what I asked you to do. And so we're good. She goes, yes, of course, I would do anything for you. I have proven my devotion to you. And Lyra's like, take it down a bit. She goes, oh, I, I've proven I'm a woman of my word. Lyra says, well, I am too. And I promised you a surprise. So I spoke to Ava. And next week, we're going to be teaming together to face the Kabuki Warriors Whoa. for the women's tag team titles. Whoa. So two of our favorites, Kyrie and Asuka, yeah. returning to NXT. Both of them being champions down here, right? Ky was Kyrie champion? Yeah, she was yeah, champion. She, yeah, you were there, was to, there. See her win, to see her off. Uh, so they're returning now as champions to put the titles on the line against some NXT talent, meaning Lyra and Tatum. Pretty cool, considering we lost the tag titles here just yep. to them to be turned into those as well. So... Uh, this is also added to next week's show. So pretty stacked. The Kabuki Warriors. Yeah, I, I always wish they'd do this more with the women's title, uh, seeing that there aren't the tag titles down here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that's cool. Um, uh, don't forget, you can get your Kabuki Sky Pirates t-shirt at chop-tees.com slash Poison Rana yes. before we get a C&D. So. Yeah, absolutely. There's Dakota's on... Uh, Dakota's... In the middle, she's playing yeah, Bailey. It seems, yeah. I might, I might see that, so it might not be a valid shirt soon because, yeah. Kabuki well, Sky I mean, Pi Bailey's already out there. Yeah, so I could just remove huggers and re-upload it. <laughs> Ridge Holland then comes out. Yeah, wait. So these two are still in the ring. Yeah. Basically, Lyra's like, "Hey, I got you this match. It's a huge tag team title match." Tatum starts celebrating. Wow, thank you so much. I'm so excited. And Ridge Holland's music hits, and it's like, huh? He comes out and he wishes them both luck at Roadblock, but says, but if you finished, could you please get the fuck out of here? <laughs> leave the ring because I've got something very important to get off my chest. Kind of rude. And Rich. they leave and he says, thank you. I appreciate it. It was weird because I think we're so used to interruptions being heelish, but he really tried to be like, sorry, ladies, but I got to do this. Yeah, I didn't buy it, Ridge. Sorry, you're um, very mean. So let them like, let I mean, to be fair, it's like, yeah. All right. You've got your match. Done. Cool. Get I, I need to say something. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, weird. And the crowd didn't know how to take it. Cause they're booing him. The Ridge was like, wait, did he, did Lyra injure Shotzi? Hold on. I got to yeah. get out there. In someone injured someone. I'm out there. I need to talk. <laughs> he says, I'm a man of action more than words, but my actions have gone too far. And I'm out here to apologize for those actions. Oh. I was defending myself and my family. There was no malice, no malicious intent. But truth will ultimately prevail. And there is pain bringing it to life. And then he's attacked. Oh, sorry. No, that's on the on the screen. It, it goes black. Goes black. And on the screen says truth will ultimately prevail. But there is pain bringing it to light. And 
Ridge Holland is ta- attacked from behind with a man with a chair. It's a chair man. By a man in a hood, a chair man. And it's Sean Spears. So Okada <laughs> is Sean Spears. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, you wanted Okada. The best we can do is the perfect 10. Yes. So they're calling him Sean Spears. They're not it, calling it's him Ty Dillinger. It's his AEW gimmick that they're bringing in. He's the chairman. It was the it was like the the spotlight, yeah. of, like the silhouette of him with the chair, yeah. the hood. Like they, it's interesting. They're doing that presentation of him. Yes. Uh, does this mean we get the epic Ty Dillinger theme song? Underrated theme oh, song. Oh, it's fantastic. Great workout thing. Yeah, it's like aerobics. Remember when that was the craziest, hottest thing in wrestling for a second there? Yeah. Ten. Just start doing it. Everything. It didn't get didn't get old really quickly at all. Like a lot of wrestling things. But this guy is back. He's back. So yeah, some people are like, wait, he's gone from AEW? But remember that. That was months ago. He just was kind of like quietly like, yeah, I've I'm done with him. Yeah. And Look, AEW gave him, he left WWE because he was like, you're not using me enough, and yada, yada, yada. He was in developmental for years mm. in WWE, finally went to AEW. He had somewhat of a bigger role there. He was in some big marquee matches, but kind of enhancement talent was really a good hand as the, the gimmick was, right? The good hand kind yep. of thing. So, you know, he left AEW and comes back here. He legit is one of Cody's boys. Cody needs some help with the bloodline. I might be rushing to things, but like eventually down the line, he will be aligned with him, whether it's this year or next year. But I, yeah, I, I feel he's, um, you know, he's a good hand. It, <laughs> it, it, is, kind of, it is kind of the thing with yeah. him. I, I think this is ultimately probably the right place for him. He's a, he's a veteran. He is good in ring. Like he is good. It's just, you know, we've seen a hundred gimmicks with this guy and He's a little bland, but as far as helping develop new people who haven't had that many matches, I think he's great at that. And yeah. we know he runs his his schools and that kind of thing and is a pretty good trainer too. So I think coming back into WWE, that is obviously an option down the line as a producer, as a trainer in the PC. I imagine him doing training as well as wrestling here. And I think he's someone who can put on quality matches it's just yeah the character you can't get me too excited about a ty dillinger or sean spears match but i kind of get the signing if that makes sense so what are the three faces sean Sean spears Spears. the chairman and ty dillinger ty dillinger john Cena, our executive producer thinks it's stan because he he played the guy who got super kicked by Shawn michaels Oh, Stan. When okay. the guy was yes. like on the computer and then Sean goes, hey, man, what's your name? And he goes, uh, Stan. And then he super kicks him and tells Triple H, look, see, I just super <laughs> kick Stan. Uh, I don't know. Uh, what the three I don't know if I like you see him going to the main roster and being with Cody and that. Not thing. right now. No. I, yeah, I can't really see it that far. Uh, I t- I'll tell you, he'll be on the main roster eventually. But hmm. uh, I imagine it's I'm not interested in Ridge versus Ty Dillinger. No, that now that is a weird yeah. first match to have. Especially that Ridge just healed himself to me, being like, hey, ladies, shut up. I'm, I want to talk about myself. And then Sean Spears attacks and gets the 10 chant right away. Like before, it, as it's panning him in the dark in the spotlight, the crowd are chanting 10. Mm. We knew it's him. So Yeah, I think that's definitely a weird first matchup. Um, but- yeah. I, not Look, I, I do like Ty Dillinger a lot. And, you know, St. Catherine's boy, Niagara Falls, stand up. But uh, kind of strange way to bring him in. And I mean... For weeks, we were like, it's Okada. And then we uh, realized that he has signed somewhere else. So mm-hmm. that's clearly not the case. And it's not like this can be one of the highlighted matches of Stand and Deliver. It's kind of weird. He hasn't, like, he's, he would definitely be taking a spot away from someone else. And I know they do that often with, like, main roster guys. But I'd say this is a bit of a, all right, kind of. A yeah, bit I, of a I, don't, letdown. I don't even know if I see it as a standard liver match. Oh, really. buddy. Oh, yes, it is. Absolutely. This will probably be the match. Unless this is next week's roadblock match. Well, he he's he comes out later and yeah. says he'll be on roadblock. Yeah, like, so I imagine it's him and Ridge Holland at roadblock, right? So but but then you've not got that much time to build up anything else. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's it's weird. Yeah. Uh but sure, I, I kind of get it. Oh, uh, I mean, you might as well talk about him being interviewed after the fact when he so sure let me find it yeah because he comes out 
uh, of the like area and he's walking and they ask him like, Hey, Sean Spears, can we talk to you for a second? And don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not saying this is true or not, but I'm wondering if Ty Dillinger was like, yo, Lexus King. I love that lineup. You got there. You know, <laughs> where'd you, where'd you get it? And Lexus King is like, yo, the guy's right here. He's got his van and his truck. Get in. And he has the crispiest, perfect 10 out of 10 mm. lineup for the perfect 10 here, Sean Spears. But yeah. 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 So what did he? I, I can't find it. Oh, I'll okay. get to it when I get to it. Okay. Uh, we then see Brooks Jensen, who comes out and says, uh, says to Obafemi, are you still looking for your next challenger? Well, I'm your guy. And Briggs says, I didn't have balls and I bust him up. You're telling people to step up and I'll bust you up. And Obafemi just laughs and walks off. But yeah, I kind of like that. I like, I feel Brooks is going to have a lot of these matches that he loses. Yeah. And, but has a good showing in it so, before he gets that big win. But yeah, possibly also next week or the, in the weeks. In the come. next few weeks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we then see Kelly Kincaid, who interviews Mello, uh, sat on a chair in his dressing room, surrounded by his security. And he says, it's simple. I want Ilya out there, and I want Ava with a contract signed, sealed, and delivered. So tell Ilya, no contract, no Mello. Yeah, so he's basically saying, look, Mello, uh, Ilya, you want to fight me so bad, but you're the champ, so put it on the line. Hmm. Classic heel stuff. We go to our next match, Lexis King versus Von Wagner. Um, Lexis King kind of having a bit of a, a feud with Mr. Stone, insulting him. A feud with family. everybody. Yeah. Every week he's drifting from people. He just pisses people off. So he basically made fun of Mr. Stone's kids, and uh, and that's what set up this match. So Von is beating up King. He holds Lexis up in this delayed vertical suplex for 12 seconds. Very nice. Pretty nice before delivering it. Uh, King comes back, attacking the knee, hits a dragon screw, wraps the knee around the ring post. Vaughn starts to fight back, hits the big boot, a clothesline to the outside, and then King hits his forearm to the back of the neck, and that's when Stone gets on the apron to distract, and Vaughn rolls up Lexus for the win. King's on a bit of a losing streak. Yeah. Here. All he does is lose in NXT, but uh, I'm happy Vaughn got a win. Don't get me wrong. We love big bad Vaughn here. But uh, the match was not that great. Lexus King is is very dull in the ring. I mean, Vaughn with the right opponent can be very good. And I don't think they necessarily ma match too well. Uh, but the most entertaining part of this was Booker T on commentary, who was like, yeah, uh, Mr. Stone shouldn't be bringing his kids to, <laughs> to NXT. Leave your kids at, at home. This is wrestling. Like, this is a show. Yeah. We don't have time for this. So why are you bringing your kids? They're watching at home. Good. Maybe, you know, don't bring your kids to work kind of thing. And I was like, damn, Booker, that's fucking this guy's this guy's the baby face in this whole thing. And like the kids and everything. It's like, damn. And you know me. I'm not Did the... he bring his wife to work and then she got kidnapped by the boogie? Yeah, man. it's like, like, Booker, so... like uh... <laughs> <laughs> you know, listen to your own words. Don't bring your family to work. But uh, I thought that was pretty funny because Vic was like, what are you talking about? Like yeah. this guy's kids, man. Uh, after the match, Lexus, what? I hit him with the coronation. Yeah, so after the match, Lexus attacks Vaughn and Stone gets in and King hits him with the coronation. Uh, yeah, I, I thought this match sucked. Uh, I thought it was dull. Um, I Wagner is fun, but there's nothing fun about Lexus King yeah. in ring. And the the offense from both guys was dull. The finish with like a distraction and an easy roll up was dull. The moves are dull. Yeah, it it's boring. It's like... Lexus King's been on TV for a while, like not obviously WWE, but he's been wrestling on TV for quite a while at this point. He should be better than this. And I think he's a bust. Like he's coming to WWE and he's been in a higher position right away. They inserted him yeah. into the Carmelo stuff. They put him into NXT. Like, like obviously it's developmental and maybe they're like, Oh, actually you've, you're he's actually booking showing that. Yeah. yeah maybe actually, just... maybe actually you're not ready for this spot. Is yeah, kind of where it's like they came in like, yo, you're going to be like this hot heel character, kind of like your dad. You're going to be a dickhead. Everybody hates your facial hair is still the only thing going for him. And I I, I want to be in his corner. And like it's been months now. You've wrestled on a pay-per-view and you still aren't like doing no anything remotely good. I really want to support this guy. I know a lot of people don't like this guy. I, I think he's really fun to hate. But now it's moved past that. It's like you can't. 
And I, you know, again, Von Wagner, he he has some boring matches once in a while. We love Von, but the chemistry can be with someone. But yeah, Von better. can be fun, you know, yeah. when he's just that big giant putting people through tables. Like, I'm yeah. not saying I want to see him as your world champion, but there are fun moments to be had with Von. I just haven't had that in any like, any in ring, and it's not like he's been up against shitty people. He's been um, in there against Mello. He's been yeah. in there against Dragon Lee, and I've come out of every match being, oh, well, that was boring. Yeah, he, he his move is boring. It's a swinging neck breaker. He doesn't yeah. even do the full neck breaker. It's like just yeah, I don't I don't know. We get a video package for the Kabuki Warriors who are coming back next week to defend the well uh, the women's tag titles. And we see that Lyra, Valkyria, and Tatum have been watching it. And Lyra says, wow, Asuka, you know how long she held this title for? She's a legend. And Tatum says, after next week, you're going to be a double champ. And Jada Parker walks in and says, look, I feel bad for Gigi Dolan and the beating she's about to get. But it ain't like what you're going to get next week is even worse. And Ariana Grace steps in and tells them not to fight and say, asks um, asks Lyra and Tatum what their beef is, essentially, with the Kabuki Warriors. And they go, oh, we don't have any beef. I've got nothing against them. Go, then why are you fighting them? And they go, well, it's for the championship. And Parker says, yeah, uh, it's better than fighting for a dumb crown like you've got. And... Lyra says, yeah, this is NXT, and in NXT, we fight. And she leaves, and Ariana's left on her own and says it doesn't have to be that way as she looks at her crown. So Ariana Grace is developing a character now that she doesn't want people to fight. Yeah, because she's Miss Universe and yeah. like World Peace and, yeah. and everything. Uh, yeah, is she taking the, like, the Miss Congeniality, Miss Universe mixing in a bit of like the tony storm timeless thing maybe i'm not sure i don't know i, I this uh, yeah i i enjoy ariana grace i a lot but i don't like this character direction i i hate any times in wrestling i hate hearing commentators go this guy just wants to have fun yeah. uh i i hate anything which is we've moved away from that i think yeah i i but... just don't like characters that you know essentially this is as wacky as you are whether you're a, a fucking ghost a yeah. A, a lawyer, a, a poker player, Batman. whatever you are. At the end of the day, you're a wrestler when it comes to wrestling. And yeah. you should want to win and you should want to fight people. And you shouldn't be worried about hurting people like Ridge Holland is. You shouldn't be worried about anyone fighting like Ariana. It just, I find it so stupid. Yeah, even, you know, Duke the Dumpster and all these other wrestler characters, they all wanted to, like, wrestle, even though they had their jobs. You yeah. got to focus, you got to be there for the wrestling. And sure, you can have chicken shit heels running away, being scared, cowardly. That's fine. But yeah. this is a character, a wrestling character, who doesn't want any conflict between anyone. Uh, Lyra brought up that Asuka held the title for a very long time. I had to look it up. But how long did Asuka hold the NXT women's title for? Just thought it would be a fun trivia question. She held it for a long time. 405 days. Wow. 510 days wow and then it was close and then she beat ember moon and said fuck you bitch yeah. and dropped the title in the middle of the yeah. ring and then ember won it afterwards and was like i am champ and everyone went now nah, you know <laughs> and then she got signed by aw and got shipped to roh and never to be seen again i i think she's fucking great and i think that they could be using her in a way bigger way in aw but 510 days wow asuka damn yeah. still the longest yeah yeah oh wait mandy rose I don't think Mandy quite got there, did she? Uh, maybe did she? not. Yeah, NXT title run. Let's see. Yeah. Mandy Rose held it for 413 okay, days. Okay, that's all right then. We see Ava and Dijak arguing backstage. Dijak saying, look, I'm done with Gacy. And then you hear a voice say, you may be done with me, but I'm not done with you. Ha ha ha. As Gacy attacks Dijak <laughs> and they keep on fighting. <laughs> It's Batman and, <laughs> and Joker, so yeah. Uh, take it for what it take it for what it is. Yeah, uh, I'm excited about the Asylum match. How do you win? You you, you tie him. You put him in the straight jacket in the back of the car, right? I think. No, oh, no, the Asylum match is this in an Asylum. Well, the the Dean Ambrose Jericho one was just pinfall. It's so, just a cage covered with weapons, and 
So there's no. You had the flower design. pot on top, didn't you? Oh right. The, what yeah. was his name? Yeah, Steve. I don't know. Uh, Pepper pots. No. Was, yeah. What was it called? Yeah, yeah. So it's not actually like in the asylum thing. Well, we'll see. Like in the image, they had a cage in the background. Like the yeah, background. yeah, true. Yeah, it would be funny if it was like, like Cinematch style, but we've moved away from those. I, things, I don't so want to. Like, yeah, that. yeah. I don't want to like go back to those, but yeah. it does. You know. So we go to our next match: Jada Parker versus Gigi Dolin. Uh, Jada delivers some slaps. Gigi sends Jada into the ropes and follows up with a drop kick to the face. Uh, Jada then drapes Gigi on the ropes and springboard sits on her uh Gigi comes in with some forearm strikes and this is where ariana grace comes out and is saying no please stop and uh, Gigi hits a roundhouse kick goes for a rainmaker but parker ducks it uh there are some weak looking strikes from Gigi. kawada clicks from dolin and then goes to punch jada and ariana is on the apron pleading so Gigi headbutts her and then Parker follows up with a sliding forearm for the win. Sliding D. Similar. Yeah. Again, this is another, this is very like uh, Lexus King's move, but to the front of the face. It's right. just another weak looking finisher, just dull strike. Yeah. Okay. So a lot to unpack. They clearly, they want to push Jada Parker. So then they're using Gigi to just, someone who's been completely lost in NXT for a, a while now. And now they're pivoting what seemed to be like the next feud, which was Gigi and Jada into now Gigi and Ariana Grace, because for whatever reason, yeah. uh, I didn't think too much of this match. I could, st you know, I used to be a big fan of Gigi before WWE. And since being here after, especially after Toxic, it's like, man, like, what have you been doing here? So I wouldn't be surprised if Gigi like leaves NXT. I feel, I feel like she'd, she'd be someone who could do a lot more on the indies, but, but, uh jada like very new here you kind of feel for g it's like you've been here so long and then now look you're like losing to like the newest crop of people and she's like she's been here before toxic attraction and that was like years ago already now so take everything i said about lexus king and insert it for Gigi dolan like she ain't got it like i think she had a name on the indies i think it was from doing shock value stuff and you know being a a big character in like as a woman which there aren't many of right. in the indies i've not seen anything in nxt i think her strikes looked weak uh i think her matches often look like they're in slow motion you're against someone who's a bit greener so yeah there is that but we've been watching her for way too long to be putting on matches like this her promos are dull her character's dull the like the end of the match was weak the Ariana Gray stuff here was stupid. Her running out trying to get these wrestlers to stop wrestling each other. Yeah, I didn't like uh, it. I, I hated this whole thing. I thought it was awful. Yeah, this was very like NXT level up here. Like I, I didn't think too too much of it. Again, there could be something in some of these characters. I like Ariana Grace. Hell, I like Gigi. I, I but I, I don't disagree with what you're saying. Mm. I can't name one good Gigi Dolan match that comes off the top of my head. Yeah. So and she's been in NXT for a very long time. So we'll see. But after the match, Ariana is pleading with Gigi, we need to come together. Come together. Right now. Uh, we see a shot of a beach. The Ooh. sea, the waves, the sand. <laughs> As the, ca pan the camera's panning out, we see written in the sand. I see the lion in the sand. <laughs> it says, see you soon, NXT Roadblock. Whoa. I mean think nxt there's a beach mm -hmm. soul ruka i think so fuck yeah you know i love me some soul ruka let's go let's go i'm all in for this this is someone who unfortunately got hit with the injury but like was definitely like hey i wonder what you could be doing here in wwe and she's had a lot of time to rehab think you know potentially we they could have another star on their hands with what we see from her coming soon I, I'm trying to find the the message in the chat, but someone was uh, assuming this was Kona Reeves. Kona, oh which, my which would god! Would have been would have been amazing, but I think you're right. I think it is Soruka. You can't if you're listening podcast. My hand went over my <laughs> mouth in shock. Why didn't I think of this? We never did that interview. We were supposed to have him on. Yeah, I, forgot, I completely forgot about that. But after Mania, I'll, I'll see if we could work that. Kona Reeves coming soon. Unfortunately, returning just after Black History Month. 
Song right. Yes, yes. 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 That shocked the the world two years in a row. Yeah. That she was featured on the graphic, and everyone's like, "Wait a second. <laughs> and this this year in the graphic, they put her and Kiana next to each other. Which like, I, Wait a second. <laughs> Next to Cody. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, no, I'm looking excited. forward to it. It's, she's been out a while now, hasn't she? So, and um, like, you know what? I can't wait. I hope she does show up next next week. Do you assume she's coming back? I, Blair Davenport, I guess, is the feud. Oh, right? she attacked her. Yeah. She took her out. But look, this girl's gimmick is she's a surfer. She's all about good vibes and she does handstands and hits a pretty sweet looking move that should be called the soul surfer. But let's hope. I mean, this, an injury very early into your career when you're still green, like yeah. it, it's going to halt you, you would think. There's so, been a lot of injuries with the legs, the right? Knees, like, yeah. yeah, the knees and everything, the ACLs or whatever. So I think, sorry, I think her finisher is actually the sole snatcher, which is probably sole snatcher. Yeah. 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 So, uh, but she was someone who was picking things up really quickly. So let's hope coming back that it hasn't halted her much because I, I do see stuff in her. Yeah, again, I, I love the the character, and from what we saw, some of the wrestling was pretty good. So I, I'm I'm hoping we get some good vibes with Sol Ruka. So we go to our main event for the Heritage Cup. It's a rounds match. It'll be Noam Dar defending the title, and you have all four members of No Quarter Catch Crew in the ring, and three of them step back, revealing Charlie Dempsey to be challenging. Little Regal Jr. Yes, which we assumed it would be. Yeah, we are very like pro picking this guy. To this win cup has a history of a hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this this guy's father, like you know, rounds match invented rat. No, <laughs> yeah, fucking invented everything in wrestling that everyone else you know uses today, but never truly gets the recognition he deserves. Yes. So because every time I listen to that goddamn grapple lads, they're always like William Regal sucks. <laughs> What's your favorite William Regal match? Uh, Chris Jericho. No. <laughs> That's Chris Jericho the- pissing in the team. Yeah. I just like that. <laughs> That's what Benno always says. Yeah. It's like, he didn't. It's just people found it funny that he pissed in his team. Uh, the thing that I find is like, William, there's always like super cuts of like William Regal doing all these spots once that like wrestlers today make yeah. it their thing. Like the Samoa Joe walking away spot. Yeah. Regal used to do that like all the time. And now Joe's comes to mind when you think mm. of it. But yeah, off the top of your head, you're like, yeah, William Regal. You know, if you want, if it comes down to it, my favorite William Regal match is probably New Year's Evil Revol- Revolution 2005. William Regal and Eugene taking on Christian and Tyson Tomko, where Eugene blows out his knee and somehow still manages Did to we get... review that <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> Or Cassius Ono, NXT. Yeah, or Regal Cesaro. Yeah. Like, that was a pretty good match. Yeah. So, yeah. screw you, Benno. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, we go to the match. Round one, uh, we see kind of Dempsey going for the grappling. Noam going for the kicks. Noam tri- uh, trips Dempsey and rolls him up for a one count. And then gets pit- pinned out of nowhere Ooh. with this backslide into like a European leg clutch. This tight pinning combination here looked fantastic from Dempsey and scoring the first fall uh, with one minute, 12 seconds left on the clock. So in like under two minutes here in round one. Uh, but this, yeah. this pin looked great. Yeah, this looked very tight, very Zack Sabre Jr.-esque here. Look, uh, if our friend Benno doesn't like Re- William Regal, maybe he likes his kid because this was very, very impressive. And like we've we've been saying, like, just give this guy this this cup, let them do the whole thing. and. It seems that's the way, but first round right away with this pin kind of upstaging Noam Dar, who also, you know, NXT UK and from, from over there, but has showed his wrestling as yeah. well. Like he's very impressive as well. Uh, most of round two is during the commercial break, and we go to round three, where they actually show it was kind of missed on camera, and uh, Vic says he missed it because of uh, no quarter catch crew we were in his way. But right after round one, there's a cheap shot from Damon oh. Kemp uh, to the back of Noam Dar, where this is like where we realize, oh, Dar is playing babyface here. Like Oro Mensah doesn't interfere at all, but there's a lot from. Yeah, it's no like a Boy double Cat turn. Yeah. I mean, these guys are heels, but yeah. Um, Dempsey goes for another black backslide, but gets caught in a choke submission, which gets counted into an arm bar, which Dar gets out of and applies a triangle 
which then switches to a knee bar. And then Dempsey gets out of the knee bar into an ankle lock. And Dar transitions that into a roll up for a two. Some really nice counters here. Very nice. There's then a double underhook suplex from Dempsey into this kind of modified full Nelson submission. Goes into the arm bar again. Uh, Dar comes back with some palm strikes. Goes for the knee bar and gets caught with the German suplex. And Dar then delivers the big back elbow as the round ends, but the referee checks because this could have been a KO in the last second. And Dempsey looks rocked, but he's still I'm with okay. it going okay. into round four. Yeah. Um, this round four, Noam Dar just capitalizes right away, hits a back elbow, a kick, and then the Nova roller, and Dar picks up the second fall in very quick fashion in round four. Yeah, so it sets up all the way to the last round, and it's 1-1 apiece in round five. So round five starts. Dempsey still looks out of it, and now Miles Bourne gets up on the apron, as does Damon Kemp, as does Gulak, and Dar drop kicks Gulak uh, off of the apron, but gets sent into the turnbuckle and then hit with a German suplex from Dempsey with the bridge. One, two, three, Ooh. and Charlie Dempsey wins the Heritage Cup. Yeah, Regal's kid is pretty lit. Uh, this is this is great. This is kind of something we've been talking about for a long time. Like the whole quarter catch crew. The name is silly, but it's another group of Drew, Gulak's wrestlers, the the school of wrestling. And I mean, you have William Regal's kid here. They never really on the nose say it. They've referenced it before, but they don't hit you over the head with it at all. It's not at least right now. And it, it makes a lot of sense, right? Like Noam Dar has definitely run its course. I'm not the biggest fan of these Heritage Cup things, but it makes a lot of sense when it, you're looking at the guys who are like wrestling. And then again, yeah, the rounds matches. Regal was watching mm. this probably there and was definitely smiling at, at this. So pretty great and some really great wrestling. Like the European clutch was a nice touch early in the match. The Nova roller always looks good. The dragon suplex at the end. So again, Regal Jr., Charlie Dempsey is very impressive and uh, i'll say what i always say when i see him I, I need this guy to retire the american dragon like <laughs> he is the one the chosen one because uh how like poetic would yeah. that be but uh so far so good man this was this was one of the the high points of of this show for me and now going forward with the cup you can do what we we've, we've kind of predicted as well as like the the horseman uh, sorry the, the free bird rule with you don't know who you're with there. I assume the yeah. fact that they introduced this, this is the first time they've introduced this yeah. rule. Like I assume that's what they're doing with. Yeah. Stuff. Um, yeah. I really liked it. W what I do like about the rounds matches is when you do it like they did, where each round is kind of a different chapter and you kind of have a different sort of style. Um, like you had a whole three minutes that were pretty much all submissions and counters of submissions. Yeah. And then you have like the flash knockout almost, Thing that yeah. speeds it up i i thought it paces it quite nicely um and yeah i i think this was time for this to move on this group of the right people to have it on uh dempsey is someone you can really showcase i i i really find like zach saber jr his matches are always somewhat of an exhibition just because it's a style you don't see a whole lot of and i think he does do it very well and he is still pretty young as well um but yeah uh, we can now have move Noam into North American title picture or something like that. Yeah. Or, you know, Metaphor might be a group they want to move up at some point because they're yeah. they're big characters, you know, and kind of like your, your pretty deadlies who maybe aren't like catching fire in ring on the main roster, but they're good characters to have and they're fun for, you know, your backstage segments and things like that. So maybe soon after Mania season, these are a group that could move up. And they got a cool entrance. They do have so, a cool entrance. Yeah, that's all That's all it takes. But yeah, I do love me some Noam Dar. I, I like the metaphor, but this is the right move. And the the real first step in Dempsey's career, right? Like he did the All Japan stuff. They let yep. him do that. And then they let him take this. Like the, the sky's the limit for Regal Jr. Uh, ah, this is where we had Sean Spears, who's yes. leaving the arena. And he's asked, why did you attack Ridge Holland? And he says, I like Ridge Holland, but he's been lying. That pain driving through his body, that's the truth. And I am the truth, and it will bring you to your knees. See you at Roadblock. There's a lot of people showing up at Roadblock. Yeah. A lot of people seeing us at Roadblock next week. So lots of Roadblocks. But yeah, the chairman, Sean Spears. So perhaps, yeah, they do this match 
next week, maybe. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, as he's leaving, we see Roxanne Perez storm out. She's still mad. And then Ava's like, oh, uh, someone, we need someone to have a title shot. Ah, oh, Roxanne, <laughs> you're, you're, you've left again. Uh, we get confirmed next week is also Chase U versus the Wolf Dogs. Yes. The tag titles. Yes, loaded show next week. So Roadblock, I mean, w- we know that we're getting Mello and Ilya, but we're also getting the Asylum match, the tag team title match. We're not getting Mello and Ilya. Oh, sorry. We're not. Right. Sorry. 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 Mello and someone else. Uh, we're getting the ta- we're getting two tag title matches. Kabuki Warriors yes. versus Lyra and Tatum. Chase U and the Wolf Dogs. And then, yeah, like there's there's a lot of stuff at it. And then plus some of the, the maybe returns, the chairman. It's yeah. pretty stacked next week. Yep. The big episode of NXT. So we end the show with a face-to-face. Uh, Mello comes out and says, now this is more like it. It's a classic contract signing table in the middle. Ava sat down. Ilya's there. He says, we've got the contract. We've got the boss. Now you're speaking my language. But I bought security out for my protection. And next week, it's going to be a sweet reunion between me and the championship Ilya says your willingness to discard anyone or anything for this championship is disgusting. And Mello says, well, does the, we are not so different, you and I. Uh, <laughs> the only difference between us is that I'm more, a lot colder in the way I do things. And I am, and that's when Tony D'Angelo's music hits. What? He comes out with Stax and Rizzo, and he says... If we're talking about big business, I got to be included in the conversation. So it's confirmed we're getting Okada, Mercedes, and Tony, Tony D'Angelo D. on that edition of AEW. No, uh, he says, Mello says, if, uh, sorry, Mello says, if you say one more word, the security will take you out. And Tony goes, you don't have to be him or the NXT champion to get stuff done around here. There's only one Don. And he snaps his fingers and all the security jump off the apron and leave. Pretty great this was spot. Great. Yeah, yeah, great spot. It, it it shocked the crowd, and Ava sold it like, oh, wait, what's going on here? And Ilya's just leave. laughing like, oh, what yeah. was that? It reminded me of a movie. Like, yeah. uh, you know, like you think you one paid them off. Yeah, yeah, you paid all these guys, and Tony was like, no, I've paid them more to yeah. leave you. So very, very I, movie. I thought that was fantastic. Yeah, very good fellas kind of thing here. Tony then sits down and he says, I can't be the only one who can see that this whole saga has been dominated by you three the last eight months. And there's only one who can turn this on its head and it's me. Mello goes to interrupt and Tony sounds pretty scary here and says, do not speak when I am talking. I've heard it all from you and I'm not done. Now, Mr. Dragonoff, you dress like a champion. You're intense, a little bit too dramatic for me but I'm going to speak to you harshly because you can handle it. I'm here to show the world and tell you face to face that Tony D'Angelo is the one to take that from you, not Mello. And everyone who crossed me got everything they had coming to them. And Mello's demanding a title match while I'm asking to earn a title match at Stan and Deliver. And Ilya says, ah, you've piqued my interest. So next week will be Tony D'Angelo versus Mello, and the winner will have the title match at Stand and Deliver. Ava says she has the contract drawn up, and it's up to Ilya to make the decision. And he sa- Ilya says, well, there's nothing I'd like to see more than Mello have to earn something for the first time. So Tony, you've got your match, but please whoop that Mello. Mello gets up and says, Tony, you can't beat me. And if we need someone to take out trash or bookkeep a washed up school, we can call you for that. But when it comes to the NXT championship, I am the Don. This pisses off Tony, who goes to attack Mello. Ilya grabs him and gets elbowed in the face, knocking him out. Damn. And then Mello picks up Tony and puts him through the table, standing tall at the end of NXT as you still suck, chance right now. Yeah, damn. Okay, so we didn't see that coming. Bit yeah, they're, swerve. they're doing. They're they're playing with us, stand and deliver like they're playing with the the WrestleMania main event. They're keeping us guessing here. Yeah. Okay. So like we were under the assumption that it's Mello versus Ilya next week, and somehow Mello gets the title, and therefore Trick can challenge Mello for the title, and we go that way. Instead, 
Still no references to Trick, really, other than like, yeah, I've attacked someone, but they don't really, they're not really saying Trick a whole lot. And now Tony has inserted himself into this picture and the, they're facing next week. So now it's kind of turning to maybe it's Trick who returns to cost Mello the match. That That's what I see. So I, I think we're getting Tony versus Ilya at Stand and, at Deliver. Stand and Deliver. Yeah, which is... Okay, let's be okay. honest. Okay, let's let's be honest. Tony D has definitely stepped up. The character has evolved. Yep. It's been a really good, prominent part. So much that him and Stacks were tag champions. Yep. they've done a lot of character stuff, and the wrestling has been pretty good. But it's still pretty disappointing if that's the match. It feels a little underwhelming for a stand and deliver. Very underwhelming. Um, it it could be a match that surprises us on the night. I mean, we know how fantastic Ilya is. It is a fresh pairing, and you know. If you do the the triple threat, kind of makes sense, but you need C Trick and Mellow one on one. Yeah, and therefore, if you're not doing like we were throwing oh, out, okay, we were throwing out there, you know, Nakajima or some sort of like exhibition match. Okada. If you're not doing that, who who else is there with Trick and Mellow out of the picture? Unless you pull like a main roster person down. See, it's, I guess yeah. it kind of leaves you with Tony D, and Okay, so wait, okay. I mean, you could have what we've been saying is like Trick inadvertently costs Ilya the title and then that pisses, like, get, yeah. gives it. You could have the same thing happen. Mello could win and Trick comes back and is like, no, Mello, you don't get the shot. I got the shot. So it is a triple threat. But that, I, I don't think you do this with Tony D'Angelo. Hmm. I, I think it I think it feels underwhelming for Trick to get his own back in a triple threat you need to have the singles match first before you get to that. I know. I, I think I, I feel like such a, a negative Nancy being like, Oh, I don't really, I don't, I'm not, I can't say I'm that excited about Tony D. Like, I think he could step up. I know what you wrong. mean. I just, yeah. If you don't do a triple, what is the match for Ilya? Really? Yeah. You've both, done, you've like done Corbin, you've great. done, Ron, yeah. you've done trick, you've done mellow. Yeah. Wesley's out and we've done that match as well. I don't know. T Tony D is kind of. I'm just yeah, but it, like uh, just being honest, it's no, not, no, I, it ain't I, got I know the sizzle. Yeah, it ain't got the sauce as much as some of the other stuff. We're taught we for weeks we've been talking about like character wrestlers that aren't even on the show, but we were under the assumption that the mellow trick program involves the title, and now it's like it could potentially be a triple threat with them getting there, and that's how Trick wins the title, which is kind of a cop out. I I think you're getting. I think Trick and Mellow main event, it'll be like unsanctioned, lights out, end of the show. Right. And this will be like earlier in the show. So it doesn't right. have the pressure of main eventing. Sure. But it is your world title. I, I do think Ilya will get a good match out of him. It just, I didn't really see it coming yeah. this way. And look, Ilya needs to move up. Yeah. And after Mania season, he should be. So does Tony up. win the title. But then Tony could also be, should be moving up. Him and Stax, right? So. Tony should win if that's the case. But again, I, I, I'm a little like, ah, okay. But who else is there in NXT? So. I mean, you you could have, you know, Trick beats Mello, sends him packing. Mello's already on SmackDown, yeah. essentially. And then you can have Trick and Ilya one last time. And that time Trick beats Ilya. Yeah. There's probably like... Kind of passing of the torch. Kind they're of doing thing. Heat Wave in Toronto, but that's in early July, right? Like the first week yeah, of July. Little, so that's a long... Away. It wouldn't be that, right? That'd be a long time. So I don't know. I, I know we're probably like, wait, we love Tony T. But it was a little like, oh, okay. Like I liked the stuff. He sounded good. He looked good. But I'm just like, ah, okay. But I, you're right. Like I don't know what else you do. Is it Trick, Mello, and Ilya in a, in a three-way? That doesn't fit the story of Mello and Trick. No. So... Tony should win, and then it's Tony and, and Ilya. So, yeah. so really, our stand and deliver card is looking like Tony versus Ilya, Trick versus Mello, the Good Brothers versus the Wolf Dogs, Lyra v Roxy again. I imagine, yeah, and Oba versus I don't know. They teased someone. Ilya today, but uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was NXT. Next week's Roadblock looks pretty good. We mentioned yep. all those other matches, so definitely looking forward to next week. But, yeah, I'm a little like, ah, I'm not saying I'm a little deflated on maybe what some of the expectations. you got to imagine Tamatanga does make his way onto that show somehow, if, whether he's wrestling or I, I mean, I, I think that's kind of what we had in mind is, you know, whoever 
Ilya drops the title now and just has like an open challenge Match. at stand liver. And yeah. that's where you'd have your Sean Spears step up or a Tamatonga step up right. or whoever. But yeah. hmm. I guess we're not doing that. Yeah. But uh, overall, I, I didn't think there was any necessarily blow away match this week. I, I enjoyed the Heritage Cup. Yeah. Um, but I'm enjoying the uh the progression. I, I actually, you know what? I we kind of yeah, not overly excited about the match, but I thought Tony came across really well in this. And he looks like the Don. It's, he's just it's now and everything. He's you know, when he started as a heel and he was very tongue in cheek, like Tony Soprano esque, whereas now he sounds more serious. He's still a baby face, but sounds serious with all that character stuff as well. A little less uh, cartoony. Uh, I, I kind of liked his his stuff, and I, I thought the you know getting rid of security and shutting Mellow up as well. Excuse me, I'm talking. I thought right. he sounded pretty good. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I do love me some Tony, and maybe they can make this work. Go heavy into the Italian crit angle versus the Russian psychopath. Yes. Uh, in, in that match, you, maybe that's what Sylvester Stallone is uh, tied to. There's rumors that Stallone is, is doing something for WWE for WrestleMania weekend. I imagine it's to do the intro video for WrestleMania with, you know, Cody or something, I would think but, so. Or he's in Cody's corner. Just because Stallone. Well, the Rock yeah. is in the Rock. I got the real Romans. Rocky. <laughs> yeah, and I got Rocky. But it would be cool to do like uh, Tony D'Angelo, like going to Philly videos, kind of like our, our shirt design, right? Yeah. Like, training you know punching he he goes he goes through the 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 like the freezer of the restaurant to go to the back area that we all know like where like your your secret clubs or whatever are but then when he goes back and you think he's going to do like evil business dealings mafia shit he's just punching the meat training <laughs> for this match i mean Ilya trains like a madman this guy's yeah. got to get get on his level so i i assume that's the match then We'll see. Oh, yeah. RYN is saying he could be in Sami Zayn's corner because they have brought up that Sami is Rocky. As well. I mean, you got Rocky, Becky Balboa as well. So you got a few. No, that is true. Yeah. That's how many people love Rocky, Rocky so much. But yeah. Yeah. Um, so. But I agree. This week's episode, it didn't have anything super blow away. There was some, there was some, you know, slogs moments and stuff. But we're advancing to next week's show, which will be pretty good. I can tell you that. Thank you for the super chat from Jake Whoa. from the Windy City, who says, great job with you guys and Nate on the latest BME for Sting. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Jake. We appreciate that. Very yes, much. we are very happy with that show. Uh, I don't think it was a super chat. It was just a uh, been a member. Oh, well, well I don't know. Is well, it a super? I don't know I how it works. Well, thank you. <laughs> anyway, it's starred and it's green, so I read it out. Uh, but yeah, uh, Roadblock next week. Looking forward to that, and uh, we'll see where we go from that. I see we have one piece of feedback here from Dylan, who says, you have to wonder if Spears is back under this name so that the people find him instead of Vince when they Google WWE chairman. Interesting. Good yeah. one, Dylan. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, appreciate everyone here in the YouTube chat. We love everyone. We are here every Tuesday night, 10, 15 p.m. Eastern time on the Post Wrestling YouTube. We go live. We'll be back next week. In fact, this upcoming Sunday is AEW Revolution. We usually go live on Sundays around 2 or 3 p.m. So but we'll be in North Carolina <laughs> this Sunday. So, <laughs> uh, so we're not going to be going live this Sunday because what are we going to talk about? Uh, so instead, we'll we'll skip Poison Rana this upcoming week. But Next Tuesday, before we go into some roadblock, maybe we'll give some thoughts about AEW Revolution as well. So look for a bit of a, uh, a one-two punch next Tuesday night. Uh, revolution talk and some roadblock talk. So lots and lots of wrestling talk. So yeah. uh, let us maybe we'll be in in Greensboro. Who knows? Maybe possibly depending if our friends give us a ride. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, thanks for everyone for listening. Uh, did you know today was ten years ago? When NXT did their first ever network show, WWE's first ever network show, NXT Arrival, oh. which about a month or so ago, we were a little uh, premature. We reviewed it for the first time ever in full. And that is also out on our yeah. Patreon. So that is a show just from just about a, over a month ago that we yeah, did. Yeah, very recent. Yeah. Shout out our Wasn't Experts. We do review NXT from the beginning and we finally got to Arrival, which yes, today is 10 years ago. Neville beat wow. Bo and uh, Cesaro Sami Zayn. We also talked mm -hmm. about that. And last plug for the Patreon, because Sting is retiring, we're doing Best Match Ever Sting with Nate. That was a great show. But oddly enough, 
We have a show called Up Yours where family members get to pick stuff. And Chris Price has selected The Crow, which oddly fits in with our Sting Retirement Month here. So uh, we're re actually recording this tomorrow. So anyone fans of The Crow, that is coming out later, early next week for, on the Patreon. So get your feedback in. I know there's a lot of people who are fans of that movie. So join in there, all in the fun, patreon.com slash Poison Rana. And at Poison Rana Pod on Twitter and Instagram for all the fun stuff. Follow us. You'll enjoy the, the great stories that we post. There's, oh, yeah. The random shit, the daily stuff is is always spectacular always yes i myself brain harrington you can find me twitter instagram i am at the bray d and i am at davy portman that's it that's all take care goodbye be safe and uh 10 <laughs> ahoy <laughs>